Yo, what's up? It's Jimmy on from Glitchy Thumbs. In today's episode, we're going to be 3D modeling memes. The meme is Smurf Cat. That one came on my radar. That one's pretty new. It blew up so quickly. If you want to see the last meme that I 3D modeled, check out the last video that was on the baby car. Pretty interesting process. I'll have a link in the description or check it out on my channel. There's a lot of videos on there as well. Let's go to the video. All right. I have no idea how this blew up. But I know there's a website called knowyourmeme.com and the Smurf Cat's on there. And a bunch of other memes are on here to get a little bit of a history or origin of where this came from. Or you guys can leave a comment and let me know how this meme came about based on your perspective. I have no idea how memes blow up. I guess I just find it fun to read them all in memes. That's what we're going to be doing on knowyourmeme.com. The about says Smurf Cat or Blue Mushroom Cat or We Live, We Love, We Lie, originally called Shyly Shy. I guess the character's name is Shyly Shy, which is a Smurf Cat, resembles a mushroom mixed with a Smurf mixed with a cat. It's a blue elf-like creature with a mushroom head and a cat face designed similarly to a smurf i guess that's the origin the meme became prevalent on tiktok in mid 2023 manifesting in photos shown on the app the predominant tiktok sound was the song the spectra by alan walker the lyrics is we live we love we lie i heard that song is actually going pretty viral this is pretty much the reference that has been going viral on the internet if i click this photo we can get an enlarged version we could probably use this as a reference file so i'm gonna click it click save as name it smurf cat reference click save and i have no idea what else it's pretty much known for other than that song by alan walker we live we love we lie that's the sound it's like on repeat in my head let's model this in blender so i can continue to practice and let me know what you think about the entire process and i'm gonna let you know ahead of time it's not gonna be perfect all right we open up blender Click general, open the toolbar with N, and I'm going to be using the screencast keys add-on to show my mouse clicks and hotkeys at the bottom right so you guys know what I'm clicking in case you need to refer to that. That's a new add-on that I've been using in comparison to the old add-on, which was the shortcut VUR. I like this one a little bit better. You guys can check it out. You can probably Google it. Screencast keys add-on for Blender. You'll be able to find it. That's the one I'm using right now. I'm going to delete the camera, delete the cube, delete the light. We don't really need that. Just start with a blank canvas, drag in our a reference that we downloaded, click medium points, get the cursor in the middle of the reference, move this down to the center of the screen manually or shift S and select selection to cursor. It will move the reference to where the cursor is, which is the red cursor in the middle. And we're going to be using this as a reference. Rename the empty as Smurf cat reference so we can get a little bit organized. Click this picture icon, go into side view move the reference back click this drop down menu right here turn that arrow toggle off so that it stays in place so we're not moving the reference around when we're creating our 3d model check opacity lower this down so that it's not too bright so that our focus is a little bit more on the 3d model and less on the reference it's just there to help us and guide us to create the smurf cat 3d model shyly shy which is the name normally creating a character in blender you need a front view and a side view of the character but i didn't really spend too much time trying to create that there might be some inconsistencies in the way i do it but i'm just going to try my best to do it by visualizing again it's not going to be perfect I'm just going with the flow and creating whatever comes to mind with whatever technique I think of. These are pre-recorded videos, so I'm just narrating everything now. The first method that I thought of was adding a cube. Let's actually just move the reference down so that we can just focus on creating the head. We're going to create this in parts, creating the head, the body, the eyes, and then creating the mushroom hat. We got to do it in parts. Makes a lot more sense to break it down like that. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier, change the viewport to two, go into x-ray mode so that we can see the reference a little bit more and also have our 3D model in place. I'm going to add loop cuts to create a more cube shape. And the entire time, I'm just thinking, how am I going to do this? Because I'm still practicing trying to get better at this stuff. I'm going to be eyeballing this a little bit, trying to visualize how I want to create the shape. I press undo to get rid of the loop cuts so that I can scale down the 3D model when it's in a circular shape. And honestly, I had this intrusive thought that, hey, this looks pretty simple to do to create this 3D model. You're probably going to see the 3D model later and it's going to turn out a little bit different than the actual reference. And this is the first time I'm doing this. The first time usually doesn't come out correct. So you're going to have to bear with me on this as I try to figure this out. 
I might actually make another 3D model of this again, just to try it again. You'll see how it turns out towards the end. I think it turned out pretty good for the first time. I deleted that in my head. The cube and the subdivision surface modifier wasn't really working in terms of how I'm going to create this head portion. I just defaulted into thinking maybe I should just use the plane method. Since I'm more familiar with that process, I just decided to go with that. Add a plane, rotate it 90 degrees, scale it down, move this into place, go into x-ray mode, select these vertices on the right side, extrude to the right, grab these vertices on the left side, extrude to the left. Since this isn't a front view, you kind of have to imagine how half of the character's face would look like. At least that's how I would think about it. Try to create a front view in your head. You'll see what I'm talking about. On the left side, I'm adding a loop cut. Then I add multiple loop cuts to the right side. This way we have evenly distributed edges. You can drag these around to make sure that it fits correctly. Grab the top vertices, extrude up. And then I select these faces on the right side and just delete them. And at the top, I'm adding some loop cuts in rows. And this is a little bit tricky to figure out. I should have just drew some sort of outline that would make this process a little bit easier. But I was trying my best to do this as quickly as possible. So I'm not spending way too much time on this. I just wanted to see what process I would go through to create this character and whether it would turn out correct or not. And maybe we will create another 3D model the next time around. I'm using the knife tool to cut the bottom of this plane to get this chin area. I'm trying to keep it symmetrical. I'm just constantly thinking like, okay, we're going to need to create the front of the face, even though the reference is like a side view. We're going to have to just imagine what the front of the character would look like. I do like this left side because it has that curve on his face where the mouth is we're definitely going to need that for the character i'm just cutting the left side off deleting these faces we don't really need that and we could just delete the faces on the right side we can actually use the mirror modifier and mirror it to the other side since the left side of the face actually looks pretty good and then you select the middle vertices check clipping so that we can connect the middle vertices together and some vertices we can just dissolve them if we don't need it i'm actually going to knife into the plane all the way to the top to give us this edge that's similar to the loop cuts and then grab this vertex at the top so we can round out the top of the head this doesn't have to be perfect if this is your first time going at it this is my first time making the smurf cat so it's actually not going to turn out how you think it is but it'll turn out pretty good with the way i have it in mind be sure to stay tuned to how the character turns out i think it's pretty funny i think making memes is pretty funny everyone's just having fun creating the character how they imagine it to be and it's a meme anyways so we're all going to be laughing at the end of the day i'm going to grab this top vertex move this up and this is going to be the head seems to be somewhat correct at least that's how i thought of it at the time when i was creating the 3d model let's go into side view extrude this delete the middle faces so that we have this little hollow area for the inside we already used a mirror modifier i was thinking let's add another mirror modifier but that's not going to work let's remove that second mirror modifier we're going to apply the mirror modifier that we already had so that it creates the actual shape of the head and not just half of it being mirrored to the other side and then we're going to need to apply all transforms and that zeroes out everything for our 3d model add a quick origin to get the origin back in the middle now we can add the mirror modifier to create the other side of the head check y-axis go into edit mode move this apart select the middle vertices check clipping drag it together so that it connects the vertices in the middle it creates our 3d model of the head for the smurf cat this might be a little bit too wide let's uncheck clipping move the middle vertices further apart and then select everything drag the shape closer so we can get an even width of the head i'm just visualizing this just going based off of how i have it in my head we don't really have a front view and a side view of the character i can't really go off of any adjustments i'm just making this up as i go move this together and then edit mode turn on clipping x-ray mode grab the middle vertices drag it together with the plane method i'm going to need to pull out these edges to create the curvature start with the left column i normally go from left all the way to the right but i notice there's a symmetry button at the top where you can click x y and z axis i'm clicking the x axis and when you do this the edge that you're grabbing also moves the edges symmetric to the shape similar to how the mirror modifiers 
woodworking. So you pretty much only have to do half of the work doing it this way. I didn't realize this before. I just recently learned it. This probably speeds up my workflow doing it this way. If I grab the edge loop, you can see that it moves the edge loop all the way to the right as well. It does the same thing as I'm aligning all the other edge loops so that we have some pretty good aligned edges going before we pull it out. So now I grab this edge loop on the left side. When I pull it out, you can see we're creating the curvature, but there's this actual hole being created at the top. That's not correct. If I undo that, clipping isn't checked. When you pull out the shape, the middle parts aren't connected. If I turn on clipping, that way when we pull out this edge, that hole doesn't get created. I'm just gonna pull the edges out to create the curvature from left to right. If you do it this way, without the symmetry in the x-axis, you're gonna have to do it one by one. This might create a better curvature or not, depending on your skill level. Level. There isn't many edge loops on this anyways, so it's not that hard to pull it out. You can always look at it at the top to make sure everything is correct. And I decided to turn on symmetry in the x-axis. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Earlier, it looked like it was working, but I'm not sure why it's not working right now. I checked Y just to see what happens. Earlier, that symmetry button worked when we were moving the edges from left to right by pulling it out. I assumed it was going to work but I guess it doesn't. Maybe I'm just using it wrong. That's why I just stuck with pulling it out one by one. That way it always works for me. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. While I'm creating this head, let me know your thoughts on the Smurf cat meme. Leave it in the comments about what you think about the Smurf cat. Have you seen it on social media? Did you make any other memes regarding this? I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments. I'm moving the head to the left side so that we're aligning it where the nose is. I'm gonna select these four faces because I want to create the nose extrude out. And since we have the mirror modifier on, it's actually extruding on the opposite end as well. We're gonna need to apply this mirror, undo that. And let's actually just create a little bit of more curvature around the head by selecting these edges and grabbing it so that we can create more of a circular shape so that's not as boxy looking. The head proportions actually look pretty off now that I look at it but that's okay. We're not going to get it right the first time. I might get it right the next time. You just got to give it a try and see how you create the character. Honestly, I might just 3D model memes just because it's fun and a lot of people are much more aware of memes. We'll just see. Maybe I'll make this like a series 3D modeling memes from comments or something. What do you guys think? Let me know and I'll just model some memes that you guys leave in the comments. I already 3D modeled the baby car. Definitely check that video out on my channel. Let's create this nose. We're going to apply the mirror that way it doesn't extrude on the back of the head select the four faces in the middle extrude out let's move this towards the center of the screen where the blue line and the green line intersects grab these front faces and i'm just imagining how i'm going to do the nose the nose is actually pretty tricky at least how i imagined it to be the first thing i did was select all the faces right click so divide that way it gives us more vertices to move around we can create like this arch of the nose move these vertices around most of the time i think they things are going to work out in my favor, but sometimes it doesn't. I just go with the flow, just try to create the 3D model, how I would do it. This meme recently blew up. I wanted to catch the wave a little bit of the virality because why not? These vertices that I extruded out is actually a face that doesn't have a top or a side or a bottom. That's not actually correct. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to select these two faces on the right side, extrude out, and do the same on the left side. And I wasn't sure why. And when I extruded those faces, it's actually not connected to the head itself. We have this area that's sticking out. I'm going to need to drag these vertices in so it's not like a hole on the side. I'm going to need to think of a better way to do this. But that's okay. We're just going to go through the process and figure it out later. My topology might be bad. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. Was it bad? What would you do to change it? That would be greatly appreciated, of course. Hit the like button if you like this video on how to 3D model the Smurf cat. Shyly shy. Doing it the glitchy way. I'm going to select these faces in the front, subdivide it so that we have more vertices that we can actually create the nose correctly. And I'm changing my mind. We're not going to subdivide it. I'm trying to simplify this process by not doing too much things and having too many subdivisions in our shape. The end goal is to create this character as quick as possible in the most simplest way. We can actually just project the reference over. I try not to make it more complicated. When I'm thinking about this, it's just very complicated in my head. So I might make some changes. What I thought was to get rid of this boxy area. Let's use the target wield and wield this right vertice to the left vertice. That way we have a straight portion of the nose at the top 
We have that curve or the area with the sharpness to create the bottom of the nose. And then we do the same thing on the left side, wield the left vertex to the right vertex. From this vertex, I use the knife tool to knife to the other side so that we have a cut on the right side. And that keeps our topology the same. That way we have quads on our faces. And I was able to cut on the right side, but for some reason I wasn't able to do it on the left side. I even selected these two vertices and subdivide so that we can get this vertex. And I tried to knife from one vertex to the other, but that doesn't seem to be working. It's a little bit weird. Usually it does. Since that wasn't working, I just thought of selecting all the faces on the left side. That side was giving me issues. Just delete that and just select the faces on the right side. Since that side works perfectly in the shape I wanted. Since we're adding the mirror modifier, I need to delete half of the shape again. We might as well just mirror the entire half of the right side to the left side. That way we have the right side of the head, which is the same, and the right side of the nose. That makes a lot more sense. This way everything is symmetrical. Also, we only have to do half of the work. Any vertices that I move now will be affected to the other side. That just makes life easier. I always forget to use the mirror modifier. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But if I have a symmetric head or body, it's much easier to use the mirror modifier and do half of the work. As I'm creating this nose, you can see it being affected to the left side, makes our life easier. And I'm moving these vertices to create the nose so that we have some sort of shading for the bottom of the nose. And then I think I need to knife this top area as well to keep our topology the same, knife on the right side to create that edge, and then drag these vertices in to create more of a slimmer nose. And then grab the top row, do an edge slide so it's not as boxy. Do the same, edge slide at the bottom, edge slide on the side, edge slide on this vertex, dissolve any unnecessary edges. And then at the top, I turn on target wield so we can wield these top rows to the face so it feels like the nose is connected a little bit more. I'm not gonna lie, going into this, I thought this was gonna be an easy task, just creating a cat character. But when I was creating it, I was like, oh wow. This is actually going to be pretty difficult, but I'm still going to plow through and figure it out. For the eyes, I just grab this vertex, drag it in so that we have this little indent. We know where to put the eyes later. That's pretty much the head. And this head doesn't look anything like the Smurf cat, but it will look like it when I project the texture on top of it. This is just a way I've been practicing with 3D models and texture projection. I just want to see how it actually looks if I do it this way. I did it with the, the baby car and it turned out pretty fine. I wanted to try it this way with the Smurf cats. The head looks like it's missing some kind of mouth area. I'm trying to recreate this somehow selecting these faces at the bottom extrude it out and then do target wield and wield those vertices to the back vertices looks like it's connected but sticking out i feel like my 3d models look like totems in a sense because of the way it looks like right now what was it called what's the totem called uh i forgot what it was called i feel like my 3d models look like stonehenge that's what it is they look like stonehenge faces or statues that's what i'm seeing right now it resembles that in a sense i don't know why it looks like that but that's just how it looks like in this 3d form at the moment i'm creating this mouth using the knife tool to cut this edge and then do a target wield pulling it out trying to get this area to stick out it looks nothing like the reference but that's perfectly fine that's pretty much the head for the smurf cat but remember we're going to have to block everything out individually the next thing we're going to need to do is move the cursor to the top by selecting this top vertex and doing cursor to selected that moves the cursor to the top of the head and now we can create this mushroom hat for the smurf cat the first method that i thought of was let's try the cube and subdivision surface modifier again for the hat let's move this head get this centered create some loop cuts i really haven't been practicing the cube and the subdivision surface modifier as much that's why i'm a little bit rusty at it i should be doing it a little bit more but that's just how it goes. And I recently learned that we can do proportional editing. At the top, just click this proportional edit button. The shortcut is O and it resembles this target. It will be highlighted in blue. When you do this, you can grab this top vertex and it will stretch and deform the shape that's within this circle. You can increase and decrease this circle by using the middle mouse button. That way you have a little bit more control on how the shape of your 3D model is going to turn out. You can create more of a circular shape into your 3D models. I've only used this a few times. The way I'm doing it might not be correct. I probably need a little bit more practice doing it. And I grab this right edge and move it all the way to the right side. And this isn't actually turning out how I imagine it to be. I just delete the left side so that we can mirror it to the right side. I thought I was going to create more of that mushroom shape, but now it looks not correct because we have this little sharp 
middle portion and it doesn't look anything like a mushroom at all i just press undo and i try to grab these vertices move it to the right turn on clipping try to have it connected this isn't working how i imagined it would work out i remove the mirror modifier extrude these vertices to the right extrude these vertices to the left and this way we don't have that sharp middle portion at the top it's a little bit more curved matches the top of the mushroom i was trying to grab these vertices on the right side to align it to the shape but for some reason it doesn't look correct maybe i should have did a loop cut sometimes you think of a certain way in blender and it should turn out how you imagine it but sometimes it doesn't you have to think on the fly like how am i going to create this mushroom hat and you got to think of different techniques that you learn and just try to figure it out on the spot i'm reverting back without the extruder left and right sides let's delete the vertices on the left side move the sharp area down add a mirror modifier Try to create the mushroom circular shape in the middle first knife into the shape because that gives us more of a circular shape but the top portion still looks incorrect i think i needed to do a loop cut but i didn't do it at the time and when i extrude the shape on the right side it creates this hat looking thing that's not really circular like a mushroom i tried adding a loop cut where i originally thought i should have and then dragging these vertices down to try to create that curve for the mushroom but it isn't turning how i imagined it to i thought this might not work let's just delete it try a different way move the cursor in the middle i add a cone this is like a party hat but i deleted that definitely not gonna work i had no idea how i was gonna turn that cone into a mushroom shape and this is me trying to figure things out this is how i do things i try different methods if it doesn't work i delete it i try a different method my brain is constantly just trying different things trying to figure it out until i get the actual solution it does bug me when i don't get it this should be fairly simple to do since I've been working in Blender for quite some time. But again, I'm still somewhat of a beginner. I probably work best with my own characters. It's a little bit hard to 3D model other characters. Probably my thought process isn't correct. I added a cube again. With this, I add a subdivision surface modifier, viewport to two, use this circular shape and try to create the mushroom shape by moving these vertices. This way we can possibly get it closer to reference, but then the topology might not be as good. And it was probably best to just do half of the shape and i just deleted this because this isn't going to work either i would probably be wasting time doing it this way the next thing that i thought of was let's add a circle if we add a circle we'll at least have the base of the mushroom and then we can just grab the vertex in the middle to create the top portion of the mushroom but this circle isn't filled in for some reason and i never really used the circle before other than having the camera rotate around it i don't know why i even thought about it i deleted that I thought of let's just use maybe the plane method, rotate this 90 degrees, do it how I would normally do it for creating my characters and just pull out the edges to create the curvatures. This way it always works, but that might be a little bit too difficult for the mushroom, but let's just see. Scale it down, extrude the vertices to the right side, extrude the vertices to the left side, add some loop cuts to the left side, add some loop cuts to the right side, keeping everything aligned, making sure all the edges are evenly distributed, grab the top vertices, do some loop cuts, and then just knife into the plane using the knife tool this is actually going to create a lot of vertices that we have to work with we're going to have that dead space on the left side and we're going to have that dead space on the right side we can individually select these to delete them or we can press c to circle select that allows us to select all these faces by just highlighting them and then delete all that dead space and then on the left side delete all these faces add a mirror modifier select everything in edit mode move it far apart go into x-ray mode check clipping so we can connect the edges in the middle and we have this mountain looking 3d model for the mushroom hats go into side view extrude this out apply the mirror modifier delete the middle faces and for some reason clipping and the middle vertices didn't connect i was trying to figure this out not sure why it wasn't working go back to the original plane where it's flat and then select the vertex in the middle with clipping on so that we can connect these vertices in the middle making sure it's a solid plane before we extrude and then delete these middle faces apply all transforms apply the quick origin add the mirror modifier check in the y-axis go into edit mode select everything turn on clipping go into x-ray mode select these middle vertices connect them and i was planning to pull out all these edge loops but you can see we have a lot of edges so this might take us some time i wanted to try symmetry again because earlier it wasn't working for some reason i don't know if there's inconsistencies or not in blender but maybe there are and maybe there aren't i turn it on i check the x-axis again for the symmetry i wanted to see 
see if I can pull out this edge on the left side. Am I able to pull out the edge on the right side at the same time so we don't have to spend too much time on this? When I pull it out, it actually works. This way I can eliminate the time it takes to create the 3D model when I do the plane method. I can just do half of the work pretty much. If I start from the left side, it's actually pulling out the right side as well. This makes our life a little bit easier. And if it's easier for you to visualize and imagine, you can just start from the middle and pull out the shape from right to left. That might be a little bit better to visualize this in creating this mushroom hat, which is giving me issues. I always think things are gonna turn out in my favor and it eventually does, but you just have to be patient and take your time. I think I can do this in like five minutes or something, but usually it's not five minutes. It's gonna be like a few hours trying to figure out how to troubleshoot and tamper with the 3D model, but this is good practice. You should always keep practicing until you get better. And I had the end goal of creating this 3D model of the Smurf hat. That's what I'm gonna be focusing on to make sure I get to that end goal so that I have some content and also a 3D model to show that I was able to create something with this meme. And this is just my process on how I do it. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are probably way better than I am at creating this. They will probably do it super fast. This is just how I end up practicing creating 3D models. When I was pulling out this shape, I realized that we don't really have this circular base of the mushroom hat. That's gonna give us some issues. This shape already doesn't look correct. It looks more of like a sombrero <laughs> looking hat or a rocket hat or a pirate hat so that might not actually work for our character we need some sort of like circular base to the mushroom hat but it's okay i'm gonna delete this we did learn that using symmetry actually works with the plane method that's gonna be pretty useful for any 3d models that i create with the plane method it's gonna eliminate some of the time that i spend with that i'm glad that i'm able to figure that out it's just not gonna work with the mushroom hats there's another alternative way that i remember doing because i did this with a bunch of trees recently we're gonna keep trying different alternative methods until i get Get this right i'm adding a icosphere because it has this circular base in a sense we might be able to turn this into a mushroom hat but i just undo that as well you can see my brain is trying to figure it out even though i've tried so many different methods and it didn't work but i'm not the type to give up so easily we're definitely going to figure this out eventually an alternative method that i thought of was to add a plane i've done this before one time because i was creating some trees and stuff with this plane method it's a little bit different first thing we're going to do is select everything subdivide and then subdivide again and then subdivide a third time that way we have all these vertices that we can work with i'm going to select this middle vertex turn on fortional edit go into front view drag this vertex up so that we can create this mushroom shape from the middle of the plane as i'm dragging it up i'm using the middle mouse button to increase the circle in the middle and as i increase it you can see the effects it does as i'm pulling up the shape when i have this middle vertex selected and i'm dragging it up in proportional edit it creates this more curved shape in the middle this looks a lot better than the other methods that i use to create the mushroom hat for these vertices on the side we're going to need to straighten this out you can scale this to get the lines straight or you can individually move the vertices entirely up to you i'm going to move the shape down a little bit align this into place drag this vertex and i'm just going to individually move these vertices to get more of a straight line on the sides and we're going to do it around all four of the sides that way we have somewhat of a mushroom shape at the top in the middle and it's a little bit square we're going to have to grab these vertices and try to make a more circular shape at the bottom of the mushroom hat for the smurf cats it's a little bit more rounded and not as square i'm going to select all these vertices at the bottom go to the toolbar on the side go to extrude region click it and there's other options i'm going to extrude along normals when you extrude along normals it lets you extrude out based on the vertices you selected that way we can extrude and try to create more of this rounder shape shape for the bottom of the mushroom hats and then we can go back to the original settings for extrude move this down let's bring the head back so we can see if our proportions are correct and this definitely does not look like the smirk hat but that's okay we're going to project the image onto it later and it will turn out just fine this kind of looks like a halloween hat a witch hat at the moment i mean it is october so we're already heading into halloween season this already looks like a halloween type character anyways we're just gonna have a little fun with this I'm actually not very good at creating accessories. This is the first time I'm doing all this, creating hats. This is actually helping me practice this portion. Anything you do in Blender is actually a good practice in creating 3D models. Even if you mess up at the end of the day, you still got the reps in. It's gonna help out with your future characters. Most likely this is just gonna be another 3D model that helps me get better over time. I'm moving these vertices, I'm moving these edges. Let's save this Blender project. 
we did a lot of work so far. I would hate to have this file be deleted. Name this Smurf Cats. And let's make our life a lot easier, actually. What we're going to do is delete half of the shape and then go to the right side and delete the other half. We pretty much have a quarter of the shape right now. And then we're going to add the mirror modifier. We're going to keep the X axis checked. That way it mirrors on the X axis. But we're also going to check the Y axis. So it mirrors on the Y axis as well. That way anything that we adjust on a quarter of the shape will just affect all the other sides as well. That just makes our life so much easier. We just have to move a few vertices to affect the entire 3D model. That's pretty much what we need at the moment because we need to create more of the mushroom shape by moving these vertices as best as we can based on the reference. Switching between extra mode to see the reference and then going back to solid mode. Right now it looks like a hat, less of a mushroom hat. I'm just grabbing a bunch of faces, just aligning it as best as I can, moving faces, moving vertices. This looks pretty bad topology, but that's okay. I still haven't really gotten into the topology videos on how they get better at it. We're not at that point in our blender journey just yet. We just have to get better at 3D modeling and blocking things out first getting used to the process if you guys created the smurf cat i would like to see how you guys created it so leave it in the comments leave some sort of video maybe you recorded it or have some sort of reference just leave a link just want to see that too and if you've gotten this far in the video hit the like button and subscribe i'm going to grab these bottom vertices delete them because we should just focus on creating the more circular shape for the top portion right now it still looks a little bit square looking we just need to move these vertices and try to create a circular shape at least that's how i had it in my head we can turn on target wield and wield any vertices that we think shouldn't be there and it's mainly the outer vertices that creates the circular shape that's pretty much what we need to focus on i'm not gonna lie smurf cat was pretty difficult this is pretty challenging you have to think about so many ways to create it i definitely got to see how someone created their own smurf cat and their process my process was taking me some time but it's actually turning out pretty well at least for my first try i think for someone's first try i think i did a pretty good job be sure to stay to the end of the video to actually see the end result and now we have this kind of circular shape because i moved these vertices around and then we extrude down to create the base and then go to face at the top and do a grid fill to fill in the circular shape and i guess that doesn't work it says at the bottom select two edge loops or a single closed edge loop from which two edge loops can be calculated that doesn't work but most likely it's because we have our mirror modifier on so let's rename this to mushroom hat if you want a backup of the current version right now you would just duplicate it and then create a backup rename it to mirror and then move it to a new collection call this backups in case you need a mirror version of this hat and then you won't have to go through the process of redoing it again we're going to apply this mirror now since we already have this backup that way we have our actual shape for the mushroom hat and now select this circular edge loop at the bottom for the base go to face do a grid fill and that fills in the bottom portion of the mushroom hat and that's our mushroom hat we're going to stick with that because it took us some time to figure that out but it works and now we're going to bring back the head so we can align this and now we have a head with a mushroom hat and it definitely doesn't look anything like this smurf cat right now i go back on google just to look at another 3D model. I should have just looked at that to see the proportions and everything. This looks pretty good, whoever created this 3D model, but I'm actually not there yet in my 3D modeling journey. My 3D models isn't going to turn out like this person's. We're just going to have to go with this Stonehenge looking 3D model at the moment with his mushroom hat. Now that we have the head, we have the mushroom hat. We're going to need the body. So let's complete this. Add a plane, press M to collapse, which is going to merge all the vertices together into one vertex in the middle. Add a mirror modifier, skin modifier, and a subdivision surface modifier. Change the viewport to 2 scale this down this is going to be like a clay that we use for the body and then we're going to extrude down we're going to create the neck think of it as you're creating a stick figure of the body first and then we're going to inflate it later on with all these vertices let's create the shoulder and then extrude again to create the upper arm and then go into x-ray mode so that you can see all the vertices that you're creating i'm going to start from this vertex in the middle so we can create the middle of the body and extrude down you can press z to constrain it to the z-axis and extrude to the right side to create the top portion of the leg and then extrude down again to create the bottom portion of the leg this looks like a stick figure at the moment we didn't inflate it yet bear with me on this process select the side vertices and try to drag it in and you can see the middle portion is actually not connected at the moment 
which is incorrect. If I press undo, what we're gonna need to do is click skin, mark the root where the groin area is, which is the vertex that I have selected right now. And then on the mirror modifier, I need to turn on clipping because that way it keeps the middle portion of the body connected. When we move the vertices around, it doesn't affect the middle portion. And now that we have this stick figure body, we can actually inflate this by scaling it, select this vertex near the groin area, press control A, and then use the middle mouse button to adjust the circle in the middle and whatever's in the circle is what blender is going to scale up for our body on this groin area i'm just dragging my mouse and it's scaling the body to inflate it we're going to have to eyeball this and that looks like a good size for the bottom half and we're just going to have to visualize this i'm just looking at the reference and just seeing how this is going to look with our character it's not going to be perfect i'm not going to get like the actual muscles and everything that you see on the character this is going to be a fairly simple 3d model of the spurf cat hopefully it was already super difficult with the head and also the mushroom hat but we're going to need to plow through and get through this otherwise we're never going to finish our 3d model of the smurf cat select this vertex near the chest area control a scale it just inflate as much as you can imagine how this character would look like as a finished product you can create as many vertices as you need if you want to create like a muscle area then you would create a vertex in that area so i might need another vertex for the shoulder so that we can inflate that area right now when i'm selecting it and trying to scale it up it doesn't actually give us that muscle this vertex would be the elbow we might need another vertex and this would be the wrist i'm trying to create that muscle that i see in the reference so I'm just adding more vertices to add an extra vertex you can just press ctrl r similar to doing like a loop cut and then from that vertex you can scale with ctrl a try to create that muscle for the forearm and also for the tricep area and we're probably going to need another vertex that way we can inflate specific areas where the arm is and try not to get it super perfect unless you want to spend a little bit more time on your 3d model but for me, I was trying to do this 3D model as quickly as possible because remember, we're still in the blocking out portion of the character. You can't really spend all your time in this portion of the process. You still got to go through the UV unwrap and then you have rigging and then animation to actually create all the movements for the character. Be wary of that. Try not to spend too much time on the beginning portion. That's why I'm trying to speed through this as quick as possible. Also, I still have to narrate the other portion too. And I can't really just spend a lot of my time talking about the first portion all right let's create this hand by extruding a vertex to create the palm and extruding to create the first finger and extruding to create the knuckle and we're going to need four knuckles since i think he has four fingers these are the four knuckles and then grab the four knuckles and extrude out to create the fingers and then in the palm you want to scale this up to inflate the hand so it actually looks like a hand it looks like some alien hand at the moment but his hand is actually like this it's a little bit more muscular looking i could have added more vertices and scaled it up but we're just going to go with the most simplest hand at the moment. And then the thumb looks a little bit smaller. And then I select all these vertices, scale it, drag it into place. So it's straightened out, try to get this aligned. And then for the neck, he has a more larger neck. And this body looks a little bit too tall. Let's grab these vertices, move it down. And then maybe the legs are a little bit too long. Drag this closer, have a little bit more shorter legs. This vertex at the bottom, we're going to create the foot later. We need to make sure the body is correct at the moment. And then grab this vertex for the leg, scale it. We're going to create the foot. Grab this vertex at the bottom, extrude in the y-axis, and then scale this until we get somewhat of a similar foot to what we see in the reference. And this looks pretty good already for the body. Let's bring back the head and the mushroom map to make Make sure our proportions are correct right now looks like i have a big ass head we're gonna need to scale the body up a little bit get the proportions correct drag this into place and then align all this and so far this looks pretty good let's rename this plane to body and then for the head i feel like the bottom of the head wasn't supposed to be this wide i'm just going to adjust some of these vertices it should be a little bit more skinny i'm grabbing these faces scale it in trying to get it a little bit more sharper around a portion this looks like squidward from spongebob actually it's pretty funny i'm just grabbing all these faces scaling it this isn't going to be perfect at all i'm just trying my best to make it slimmer now it really looks like squidward spongebob that was a bad impression but you gotta give me props for trying this bottom portion is actually not correct but anyways i'm trying not to make this as perfect as possible this is just a practice prototype version of smurf cat and this is what i came up with you have the head the mushroom hat and the body we can't forget the eyes select this vertex for the eye area that we created add a uv sphere scale this down this is going to be super simple we're not going to make this complicated at all isolate this delete the back faces we don't need that mirror it on the x-axis that creates our second eye and that completes our blocking out of the smurf cat 
hat. This is our 3D model so far. We have the head, we have the eyes, we have the mushroom hats, we have the body. That's going to bring us into the UV unwrap portion. You might have noticed that the sound quality was a little bit muffled for the blocking out portion. I was changing some settings and I forgot to change it back. That's the reason for that. But the sound quality should be much better from UV Unwrap all the way to the end of the video. Let's get to the video. UV Unwrap. I click into UV Editing and on the right side you see our 3D model of supposedly the Smurf Cat and it's in a all white color at the moment. On the left side I can choose the Smurf Cat reference that we downloaded earlier from google i'm clicking the mushroom hat because we're going to need to add a new material and then go over to base color and choose image texture and it's going to change to this black color click this drop down menu smurf cat reference and you can see some sort of texture is being applied on top of our mushroom hat and with the mushroom hat selected i shift click the head the body and press ctrl l so I can link the material from the mushroom hat onto the head and the body. And now we have this mud looking 3D model of the Smurf cat. This mud looking 3D model of the Smurf cat. The reason why it looks like this, if we select the mushroom hat, go into edit mode, select everything. You can see our UVs on the left side is this little weird odd shape. And it's projecting the bottom right quadrant. That's why you see a little bit of the rocks on our mushroom hats. We're gonna need to unwrap this ourselves. We could either mark seams or press U and then do a project from view. And it will project a UV on the left side similar to our shape that it looks like on the right side. And project from view is just like a quicker way to create your UVs if you're trying to create something super quick, like how I am with the Smurf cat. And this shape actually works pretty well for the mushroom hat. And we're just gonna leave it here for right now. You can see when I let go, it's projecting wherever we have it on our reference image. The top portion, you can see a little bit of his nose. And then the bottom right, see a little bit of the body. We're going to move the UVs later on. We're going to try to do a project from view for all the separate objects, like the head and the body. For the head, select it, go into edit mode, highlight everything. And you can see only half of the face is being selected at the moment because we have a mirror modifier. And this way actually works pretty well too. If I press U to UV unwrap, and select project from view we get this uv that's projected of half of the head and this definitely should make our lives much easier because we only have to project half of the face it's pretty much gonna be the same thing having it symmetrical like that Remember, we want to minimize as much of the 3D modeling process as much as possible. That way we're not spending way too much time doing our 3D models. We have so much more to do throughout the video. And if you get stuck in one of the processes, you'll most likely quit and not finish the 3D model. That's why I'm just trying to speed through everything to make sure that I keep myself on track. We're in the UV editing portion right now, and we still have a whole bunch of things to do to get our character finished. I click the body, go into edit mode, and I try to select everything, but I remember I didn't apply any of my modifiers. We have all these vertexes that we were using to inflate the body. We don't actually have the shape of the character. If I press U right now to unwrap, you can't really do a project from view because there's really no shape to project from. What we're going to do is apply all our modifiers and that way it creates the shape with all the vertices. And with this, we can select it all and then press U, project from view. This will quickly create the UVs on the left side of the body on how it looks like on the right side. And this is super useful if I'm trying to create UVs super quickly instead of having to mark the seam slowly unless you're really trying to create a perfect 3D model where you want to mark each seam individually then I would do that but with this I just want to do this super quickly so that we can get through the process create the character it's all that really matters at the moment those UVs work pretty good I usually switch to my texture paint workspace I just like it much better I should probably create another workspace for this texture projection process. With this texture projection process, I have the top left showing me my 3D model with the textures on front. And then the bottom left, I have the UV editor where I can drag things around for my UVs. And that's where our reference is. And on the right side is where I select the 3D models in edit mode. The top left, bring down this drop down menu for the viewport shading, change it from studio to flat and material to texture. That way we can see our texture being applied on our 3D model as we adjust it, drag this out, give us a little bit more room. That just helps me see the texture on my 3D model so that I can do my adjustments to make sure that this character comes out correctly as the smurf cat with the mushroom hat selected we can select 
the UVs on the bottom left and start to adjust this and start to move the UV location so that we can project the correct mushroom texture. So let's move this into place and make sure you select all your vertices. Otherwise, it's going to stretch like this. Some of the vertices are still stuck at the bottom because I didn't select that. You can press undo and it will revert back to the original position. Press A or highlight everything to select the UVs. Drag this into place. And as I'm dragging this to the mushroom head, the texture being projected and applied to my 3D model at the top left. And this already looks pretty cool. We already get that mushroom texture from the reference. This already looks pretty good. We just have to make a few adjustments to get rid of this blue. And I switched back to UV editing. And when we did a project from view, we were only able to get the UVs of the front of the mushroom. But what about the bottom of the the mushroom so that we can get this top portion of the head connected to the mushroom hat and if we wanted to get that as well we would need to mark the seams project from view might not have worked in this situation because we also want this bottom portion as well if i select the circular edge loop and mark the seam we should be able to create the uvs for that and if you turn on uv sync selection you'll be able to see that make sure to go to uv check live unwrap do it on both sides bring down the drop down menu click options check live unwrap and what we're going to do is press u to unwrap again and this isn't what we wanted we got the bottom uv for the mushroom hats but we also have this circular uv for the top we wanted the uvs from the projection view for the top part and the circular portion for the bottom part i was trying to figure this out i press u again do a project from view so that we get the front view of the mushroom hat and then i selected everything and use circle select to select all the faces on the right side and then press u again to unwrap that where we have the uvs for the mushroom hat for the front part and then also the circular portion for the bottom and this is perfect that's how you would unwrap your uvs for the mushroom hat you gotta just try different things different methods that you've learned and see if it works sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't that's how i learn getting hands on and just trying things moving on to the head we have half of the head this should be perfectly fine i can do the full head by applying the mirror but we're just going to keep half at the moment moving on to the body select it edit mode select everything now for the body for the smurf cat reference he has some white pants that's what i wanted to do separate the pants by selecting this edge loop marking that seam so that we can isolate the uvs for the pants and since we turned on live unwrap earlier on as soon as I mark the seams, you can see it being unwrapped live on the left side. That's the benefit of having live unwrap on. You can see your UV shape as you mark different seams to make sure it's the correct UV shape that you want. I'm marking the seam on the side and it might just be faster to go into front view and then do a project from view and then just separate the pants from here. At least that's just how I thought about it. If I select all these faces where the pants are, make sure to select it in x-ray mode so that you're getting the faces in the back as well. And when you do this, you can actually separate the UVs of the pants from the top portion of the body. That way we still have the body UV and also the pants UV. And I could probably clear the seams just to make sure that it doesn't mess up our UVs. And we might need to reselect the faces again since I cleared those seams and then move the pants UV down. And that way we can project the correct thing onto our 3D model of the Smurf cat. And now I select everything so that we can organize our UVs and we're actually missing the eyes. That's why we have this weird fence looking UV on the left side covering most of our space. We're gonna need to select the eye as well, do a project from view. And now we select the mushroom hats, select everything, move these UVs to the side, select the eye, move the UVs to the top, select the head, move these UVs to the bottom, select the body, move these UVs to the top right. I'm doing this so that I can separate the UVs so that I can organize them again. When they're stacked on top of each other, it makes it hard to select it and it's gonna be hard to organize everything unless they're all in separate positions. That's why I did that. And then now we can organize everything in our UVs. We actually don't need to do this because we're gonna project the texture. We're just gonna be moving the UVs based on our reference image anyways. And we're pretty much done with the UV editing portion. That brings us to the texture projection portion of this video i click my texture paint workspace and bottom right changes to uv editor and on the right side select everything go to edit mode that way we can see our, all of our uvs and currently our uvs are scattered around it's projecting a specific texture onto our 3d model this actually looks pretty cool for our 3d model he looks like a creepy 
Mortal Kombat type character, kind of like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. I could actually use this in a game at some points. It's supposed to be the Smurf Cat, but this actually looks pretty cool. I like this. That's why I'm rotating around. I like it. Even though we didn't intentionally do this, the texture came out pretty awesome. And I might use that if I make some sort of fighting game. That would be kind of cool. I'm actually going to save this as a backup. So I can refer back to it since we're going to make changes. The Smurf Cat copy is going to be the texture file for this Mortal Kombat texture on our 3D model. And that way I have that file saved for future reference. Let me know what you think in the comments for this Mortal Kombat type texture on our 3D model. What should I use it for? But now we need to project the correct thing onto our 3D model. And these are things that I really like in my character development process. Certain things happen and it's unintentional, but at the same time, you can actually use that to your advantage. If you do make games or you make characters, now you have this other character that we unintentionally created. This can actually be some sort of like fighting game, similar to maybe Mortal Kombat, or even just some sort of scary game where we have this character chasing someone around. Those are things that I think about that I think is pretty cool as you're creating a character in Blender or creating a game in BuildBox. Like certain things happen. Now you have the save file. You can use that at any time. That's why it's cool to record your process and different things happen at different times and it creates different ideas for you to continue creating more cool stuff. Back to the Smurf Cat, we need to focus on getting the final texture projection for the Smurf Cat so we can move forward with all our UVs selected. Let's move this front portion of the mushroom towards the mushroom on the reference. That way we get this white texture and we can scale this to fit or highlight specific faces or vertices to make sure we align this as close as possible. Doesn't have to be entirely perfect unless you want to spend a lot of more time getting this perfect and then just rotating around your 3D model to make sure there's no inconsistencies or areas that you need to fix. With this portion, this is getting some of the background, which we don't want. We just want the mushroom. Let's grab this area right here. Again, I'm just doing this super quickly. So my UVs are probably gonna look all over the place and that's okay though. The goal is just to project the correct texture on our 3D model and then move forward towards the entire body we can move these faces down and drag it down it'll deform our uvs based on what's in the circle so that we can actually get this to fit nicely and i'm adjusting the scale with the middle mouse button and we're getting this area fixed up nicely to project only the mushroom hat i actually really like the texture projection process just makes everything much easier also you can just find textures to use for your 3d models for your characters this method is similar to how i did it with the, the baby car where we projected the textures and this just reminds me of the old games that i used to play on the ps1 and also n64 this was how they made their 3d models in the past it would be low poly models they would project simple textures on top i think back then during that time game consoles couldn't really handle too much. This was a technique that they would use, but I'm not sure how they actually did it because Blender didn't exist in the past. They probably had their own 3D modeling software. I should actually look into that to see what they used. It was probably much more simple than this. This is what it reminds me of. And I think that's why I like this process. It just reminds me of my childhood. When I was a kid, I didn't know how to create 3D models or how to create textures. But now that I'm older, I can do this on my own with the help of Blender. And that looks pretty good for the top of the mushroom hats. The bottom of the mushroom hat, I wanted this area of his head connected to the mushroom. Let's move the UVs to the right side. This is what happens when we have UV sync selection turned on. When you're moving that circular portion of the UVs, it's also moving the connected vertices of those UVs. Be careful of that in order to avoid this you need to just press undo and then turn off uv sync selection that way you're only moving the uvs for the bottom portion and i move this over and i wasn't really sure how to get just the top portion so i'm just scaling this and seeing what looks good we need to project that onto the bottom portion and if i scale the uvs down it's actually projecting a more enlarged texture for the top part and if i scale it up it gets more of that veiny looking portion of the mushroom hat. We have to kind of play with this, figure out what design we wanted. It's much easier to probably create our own texture to get that veiny mushroom-like design. I was just trying to use the reference and do this as quick as possible. We're just going to scale it and drag it into an area that looks like we have that veiny look for the bottom portion. It doesn't have to be perfect. We could even just drag it to the top 
and get a similar color to the top portion of the mushroom. That actually works too. We're really not going to see much of the bottom portion of the mushroom hats. Our focus is mainly going to be on the front portion of the face, the mushroom hats, and the body. That's okay. Select the head, select the face UVs, let's drag this into place. I'm dragging this to the half of the face. The other half is just being projected to the other side anyways. It's pretty symmetrical in a sense. We just need to scale this, try to get that cat face. <laughs> this actually looks pretty funny for the Smurf cat. You just have to be creative with how you drag your UVs and just experiment. This is just a quick way to do it. And at the end of the day, I'm still practicing. This helps out with this entire process. I've been thinking about maybe just doing texture projections in some of my games. That just makes it much easier. And this creates like a different art style that's different from mine's. And I think this looks pretty good. And these white eyes are actually throwing me off. Let's select it, scale it down, drag it towards the black eyes. And it's still white because we didn't apply the material onto this. Make sure we select the material that will give us our black eyes with this shine from the reference. So far, so good. It's starting to look like the Smurf cat and these white eyes are not going to lie. He almost looks like the Night King from Game of Thrones. If you guys watch that, such a great show. I legit like binge watched the entire thing. Game of Thrones and House of Dragon. This looks pretty good for the front of the face, but as I'm rotating, I realized that this is also projecting the face to the back of the head, which is what we don't want. Texture projection definitely does not work in this case. Well, it does work, but we need to isolate the UVs for the back of the head. Otherwise, we're going to be projecting the same thing on both sides, which is what we don't want. What we need to do is move these UVs to the side, scale it down. We need to find a position on the texture that sort of blends in with the front of the face. This is the problem with texture projection. You have to figure out an area to put your UVs so that it blends correctly. Otherwise, it will look super weird. But it's entirely up to you how you want to do this process. And if I scale it down, we get more of this solid blur color but if i scale it up we get more of the actual texture we have to determine how you want to do this i'm actually reselecting the faces again for the back portion we want to keep the sides of the face the same but just change the back portion that way we don't have to move as much uvs we only need to blend in the back faces i'm grabbing all these vertices just moving it in and i know this is messy perfectly fine it's just good practice if you want to check out my other characters definitely do so on my channel it's actually a lot of techniques you can learn that will help you with your character development i'm actually learning a bunch of techniques and then just practicing it and making sure i remember it as muscle memory so that i can create any character in the future i definitely want to continue making 3d models and try to get better at it but this meme caught my attention definitely want to have my crack at it have a little bit of fun creating a smurf cat putting some stuff out the head definitely unproportional doesn't really look like the reference i'm just trying to move these vertices around i'm visualizing something different we can move things around in proportional edits and try to get a shape that's somewhat similar to the reference it's a little bit more rounded at the bottom versus like harder cheekbones which is what my 3d model has we can adjust these with proportional edits Proportional edit is something I actually never really experimented much with. That's why I'm using it a lot now. Along with texture projection, that seems to be a new workflow that I'm actually learning. I guess it makes it easier to adjust your 3D models. And I'm not really sculpting. I'm just trying to create some low poly 3D models and then adjust everything based on their vertices, edges, and faces. Proportional edit actually works pretty well doing it this way. I'm moving the eyes out and I'm just eyeballing everything based off of how I see it on the reference. Just trying to get the face to be a little bit more circular and not as bony looking at least that's how i view it and this is where my perfectionist starts kicking in because i'm thinking hmm let's try to create this perfect 3d model but at the same time i'm also thinking wait we need to hurry up and finish this 3d model otherwise i won't end up finishing it because i'm just spending way too much time trying to make it perfect you have to battle yourself and be logical to get to the end of the finish line the chances of me creating a perfect 3d model right now is very slim versus the chances of me finishing this 3D model. I might as well just finish the 3D model because that's also the end goal anyways. That's really what I think about. And that looks pretty good so far for the face. We're not gonna adjust that anymore. It looks pretty good so far. 
What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments. How does this look for the texture projection of the Smurf cat? Let's move on to the body. Start projecting the correct pants. Make sure to turn off UV sync selection. Otherwise, we're moving vertices that we don't want to move. Select the pants. Turn off proportional edits. Drag this down to the bottom. And the pants is kind of like a paint style muddy look. The left side of the pants looks pretty good. But the right side, we need to do some adjustments. That's why I'm selecting all these faces so that we can just move this into place. Get rid of this dark area of the pants and then just drag our UVs around. This is because it reminds me of PS1 and N64. This is all entirely up to you, how you want your design to turn out. I am perfectly fine with the textures looking like this because it reminds me of PS1 and N64. That's probably the style that I'm going after. You might want a different style. You gotta make that decision as you're creating your 3D model. And this is perfectly fine with me. Technically, I can still use this, possibly in a game. And that looks pretty good to me. I don't really care about getting a perfect 3D model. I just want a 3D model at the end of the day that I can use for the purpose of content creation. This is so far so good. Technically, I can still use this, possibly in a game. Now let's move the body UVs as close as possible. This actually works perfectly because when we project the body, we're actually getting that rope near his chest area that actually looks pretty cool we just need to adjust the arms a little bit otherwise it's out of place and then move the arms into place to make sure we get rid of this area that's projecting this green background for the smurf cats i think this looks pretty good so far what do you guys think did you expect the 3d model to turn out this good did you expect it to look much better what are your thoughts? Leave it in the comments. You should definitely give it a try and create your own Smurf Cat variation. Are you going to give this a try? Leave it in the comments. I'm just adjusting all these UVs. The UVs can actually be placed however you want it, as messy or as perfect. It's entirely up to you. As long as you're projecting the correct texture that you want, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. At least that's how I think. Of course, if you're going to use this in some sort of game, definitely would save space in your textures by just highlighting lighting the areas that you want and try to fit it into a square of some sort in your textures that way you don't have all this dead space that we're not really using and that's like a waste of texture space and so far this looks pretty good for a smurf cat i actually really like how it turns out even though he looks like a stonehenge type character for the main 3d model it actually turns out pretty good because of the texture projection of course the head can actually be worked on a little bit better but we can always do that at another time i'll probably make a part two where i'll try my best to create the perfect 3d model of the smurf cat we technically got the body correct we got the mushroom somewhat correct for the hat i just need to make a better head for the 3d model that way it'll look much more proportional to the reference but this is actually a pretty good first try i'm actually proud of how it looks for some reason i like this like meme -y type of style anyways it makes it much more unique and i'm adjusting the face by scaling this bottom portion i felt like it was a little bit too wide you can select faces and then scale it or select vertices and do proportional edits however you want to do it. And this looks pretty good for the Smurf cat. Definitely a great 3D model that I can use of the Smurf cat. Make some minor adjustments to the mushroom hat. Let's go to layouts so we can see the Smurf cats in a bigger view, get a better glimpse of the 3D model and the texture that we applied. Bring down a drop down menu for the viewport shading, changing from studio to flat, material to texture. This looks pretty good for the Smurf cat. You, you gotta give me props for this. For the very first try, I think this looks awesome. We're missing the snail in the back, but that's an accessory. We can always add that later on. We just need to focus on the main portion, which was the mushroom mats, the head, the body. And I think this turned out pretty good. And let's save this. I'm going to click save as, because if I just click save, it's going to overwrite the Smurf Cat copy, overriding our Mortal Kombat type texture that we had earlier on. One for the Smurf Cat texture, and then one for the Mortal Kombat looking texture click save that way we have two save files if I go to open recent and open the Smurf Cat copy we have the Mortal Kombat fighter looking texture on our 3d model and that looks pretty awesome let's see the full view as well for this by going to viewport shading studio to flat material to texture and look at this this looks pretty awesome he looks super creepy 
it really looks like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. That's what I really like about it. We pretty much unintentionally created two characters, even though this was a Smurf cat. We have the Smurf cat texture on our 3D model, but we also have the Mortal Kombat type texture. I can actually have two different games. If I wanted to use this 3D model, I can use it in various ways. And this is what happens throughout the entire process. You just stumble upon different ideas. And that's the awesome part of creating your own art because you can use it however you want to use it. And they both look pretty cool and both very different. They could also be in one game where we have the Smurf Cat maybe fighting this evil version of itself. That's actually a pretty good idea. Maybe I'll use it in a game. We'll just see. I'm just creating 3D models just to practice. I think it looked pretty good. Let me know what you think of both of the textures. Now that we have this 3D model of the Smurf Cat, we're going to need to rig it in order to create some animations let's rename the eyes from sphere to eyes select all the body parts move it to a new collection name this to smurf cat keep ourselves a little bit organized hide the reference select all the separate objects and we're going to export this fbx file export fbx check selected objects select armature mesh change it to z forward uncheck add leaf bones uncheck nla strips uncheck all actions and click export we're going to go to mixamo.com and this is a service provided by adobe for free you can animate different 3d characters if they're like a humanoid body click upload character I'm going to drag in the Smurf Cat FBX that we just exported. Click next. And what we're going to do is rig the character. And this is the auto rigger. We need to drag these color markers to their correct position. Place the green marker where the wrist is. Place the yellow markers where the elbows are. Place the orange markers where the knees are. Place the red marker where the groin is. Click next. And then it's going to show you your 3D model slightly moving so you know how it looks. And if there's any mess ups, you can actually go back into Blender and fix this. But it looks like his head is backwards. His feet also look backwards as well. But we're looking at it in a front view. So that's a little bit odd. This wasn't supposed to happen, but this is part of the process. We have a backwards head character. And then when you click next, you can see that the 3D model of the Smurf cat is in the ground, which is incorrect. And the reason for that is in Blender, I forgot to apply all transforms and the quick origin. Before we make any changes, let's duplicate the Smurf cat collection. This way we have a backup of the character in case we need to revert back to it. This way I can make as much changes as I need and not have to worry about anything because I have a backup. I can always revert back if I need to. But the reason why he was in the floor like that is because that's how we have it in Blender. That red line on the x-axis is basically the floor, and then the rest of his body is underground. We need to adjust this. We need to move it up. That way his feet is on the floor, not within the ground. And also we need to get everything correct in terms of the location, rotation, and scale. That's why we apply all transforms. That way it zeroes everything out and gets the scale back to one, and then apply the quick origin to get the origin back in the middle. And we need to do this for all the separate objects as well. For the eyes, we need to apply the mirror modifier first. Apply all transforms. Quick origin. Same thing for the head. Apply the mirror. Apply all transforms. Apply the quick origin. Same process for the mushroom hat. Apply all transforms. Apply the quick origin. That way the scale is correct for the three models. Also the positioning. And go to file. We're going to need to export this again. File. Export fbx and since we already selected our options on the right side those are already pre-selected click exports fbx and it'll overwrite our smurf cat fbx file and we just go back to mixamo click upload drag in the smurf cat fbx redrag the color markers again blue marker to the chin green marker to the wrists yellow marker to the elbows orange marker to the knees red marker to the groin click next let it do this thing and then we'll get a preview of the 3d model we fixed the positioning, which is correct. It's above the ground, but the character is still backwards, even though we're looking at it from a front view. Click next. This also gives us a preview. Everything looks correct here, but as soon as we select an animation on the left side, let's select this defeated animation. The animation shows the character backwards, which is incorrect. We definitely need to fix this. The animation shows the character backwards, which is incorrect. We definitely need to fix this. Back to Blender, go to File, Exports, FBX. I checked my preset settings that I had for no animations. 
And this one, I had it selected as selected objects mesh Z forward is negative Z forward. And I'm checking my animated preset that I have. It's backwards because I changed it from negative Z forward to Z forward. Let's change this back to negative Z forward. Normally I use Z forward in my games. When I do that, it's in the correct direction. But I guess since we're using it in Blender, maybe that it's uh, incorrect. We're changing it back to negative Z forward. I'm gonna click export again, go back to Mixamo, click upload character, upload the Smart Cat FBX once again, third time's the charm. This process is super tedious if you keep messing up, so make sure you don't mess up. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna have to keep uploading the character and redoing this process again, which can be a little bit annoying, but you actually learn by practicing. You actually learn by practicing. Doing it over is actually helping you out. So don't get frustrated, just be patient, and you'll be able to figure out the best framework or process for this. The next time you'll know not to mess up again and i occasionally mess up that's why i record everything so i know okay never mind i shouldn't have done it that way i should actually do it this way blue marker to the chin green marker to the wrists yellow marker to the elbows orange marker to the knees red marker to the groin you can eyeball this it's your character have an idea of where to place them click next it'll do this spinning animation it's like scanning your character and rigging your character at the same time this is similar to how we rig our characters in blender with rigify where we add bones and stuff but mixamo does it for you and it auto rigs your character only if you have a humanoid type of character with a body type like this they have presets animations for you to use and it's being applied onto your 3d models based on the rigs that they have, and it makes the process much more simple, much more faster, and we have access to a lot more complex animations, which is what we want. And this is just a different way to create animations for your characters. And so far, this looks pretty good. Negative Z forward is actually the correct option for this. If we click next, you can see our character is facing forward correctly this time. The defeated animation is playing. This looks correct. Our 3D model looks like some Stonehenge character. I actually don't know how to apply the textures into Mixamo. I should look into that. I just think it only lets you upload your FBX file. So it's like naked like this with no texture. I could be wrong, but I never looked into it. I just dragged in the FBX for the animation. That's about it. And then I'll bring it back to like Blender or BuildBox to use. That's where pretty much our textures are going to be applied anyways. Let's look for a walk animation and select the second option. And you can click around to see different animations. And this walker walk looks pretty funny. But let's select this third one. More of a casual, faster walk. And if you click in place, the character will walk in place. And you can pan around to see how this looks like. This looks pretty good. You can adjust the overdrive, character arm space, and trim as well. But I didn't do that. And if you want to remove the animation, you just click X. And it'll bring back your original character with no movement. And we actually need to download this FBX file with no movements or animations. So that's why I click download, change the pose from T pose to original pose, click download. And I'm going to be keeping myself organized. The original Smurf Cat FBX that we exported from Blender, I'm renaming this to Smurf Cat Blender Export. And then the one we downloaded from Mixamo, I'm renaming this to Smurf Cat Mixamo. That's how we know what file is what. Otherwise, it's going to be confusing looking at it and you have no reference point. We always want to be able to tell what this file is. And you can always make it more clear by just typing more descriptions into your file name, which is what I'm doing. This one is no animation so that we know this FBX file has no animation. And let's select this third walking animation again, check in place. And we're gonna download this without the skin because we just need the bones and the rig. Click download, drag this over to our folder. Name it Smurf Cat, Mixamo, walking.fbx. That's how we know the differences between our FBX file. Back into Blender, I'm gonna import the no animations FBX file for the Smurf Cat. And you're gonna see this bone attached to the character. What I'm going to do is uncheck our original Smurf Cat collection, that way it hides it. And then we just have the FBX file that we dragged in from Mixamo. And you can tell it has the rig, if it has this bone sticking out of this head. When the FBX file is in Blender with the armature like this, the first thing that we need to do is 
apply all transforms because the scale is incorrect. It's at 0 0.01 right now. It should be at one. That's why we applied all transforms. I forget if I need to do the quick origin or not. You may or may not have to do it. I did it here. I'm selecting the armature, go to pose mode, right click, and I'm using the XP kit to add on. And this is going to allow us to extract the meta rig and then bring up this menu on the left side, change the rig type to Mixamo. And then these are values that I entered for the offset of the knees, the offset for the elbows and the offset of the fingers. You can adjust this however you like. Just make sure to look at the bones and see if it works for your character. This just helps the knee, the elbow or the fingers bend correctly. I'm still trying to figure out whether this makes a difference or not. I haven't really looked much into it. All I know is it just helps bend the rig correctly. Right now you can't really see the rig because everything is hidden. Click that little character button on the right side, expand the viewport display, check in front. That way you can see the armature in front of our Smurf cat 3D model. And then I imported the Mixamo walking FBX file that we downloaded. And this is just the bones because we didn't download it with the skin earlier. And what I was trying to do was bind the walking animation to the no animation FBX file. That's why I click right click, binding, bind to active armature, and it brings up this menu for to bind, change it to Rigify controls, bind targets, change it to Mixamo. And this looks incorrect because this isn't how it's supposed to look. I was following my notes. I have notes on this. But it's been quite some time since I did this process for the XP kit add-on, getting animations from Mixamo and then using it within Blender. That's basically what we're doing. Instead of having to create your own animations, we're just downloading the animations from Mixamo and then importing it into Blender so that we can use those animations to create some sort of cool render of our Smurf cats. That's the process that I was doing. And I'm obviously going to mess up on this process because I haven't practiced this much. I've done this a few times but this portion is very confusing. This part isn't really necessary for my own game process. I just do it because I'm trying to practice within Blender and getting animations in so that I can actually render some cool animations and videos. And that's something I do actually need to practice. Earlier when we extracted the meta rig, I forgot to go to object mode and regenerate the rig. That way it generates a rig for us and then hide the meta rig. And I was supposed to bind the walking animation to this new rig that was what i was supposed to do that's what i'm doing here select that rig shift select the walking animation armature go into pose mode right click select constrain controls this is actually super confusing remember i'm practicing in my own videos but if the process is incorrect i have the process wrong either in my notes or i'm doing the process wrong and i'm just trying to figure it out by being hands-on and go through the process again i've done this a few times a while back but then you end up forgetting because this process is also very lengthy it's hard to remember things unless you do it over and over and i haven't done this process enough times where it's muscle memory just yet so this is just me working through it and i'm just narrating everything speaking out loud let's do this again select the rig shift select the walking armature go to pose mode go to binding bind to active armature so that's correct when you bind to the active armature you should see the 3d model deform a little bit and then to bind change that to rigify controls bind target change it to mixamo and then select the rig right click binding select binding select constraint controls and that selects the entire rig and then select one of the bones on the armature right click animation bake constraint actions and this is going to bake the keyframe animations from the walking animation to your rig and then click bake and exits go to your animation workspace this one's mine where i have the action editor on the left side and then the character on the right side where i can select it click the drop down menu viewport shading studio to flat material to texture so we can see the smurf cat texture so it's not so naked with our stonehenge looking 3d model with the action editor you can see all of our actions this is all the animations that are on on our rig the one that we just generated is the f action.001 which is the correct one there's going to be other ones in this list 
but the one with the F is usually the one we want. And when I select it, you can see all the keyframe animations it has. And this one has a lot. This is a very complex animation for each rig layer. That's why downloading it from Mixamo makes this process much faster because we don't have to manually do it ourselves. And we can just play this animation to see how it looks like. I'm zooming in. Let's hide the walking animation armature so we can see how our character looks like. This looks incorrect, actually. His arms look messed up. Everything looks correct. The walking animation works, but his arms are like behind him. And since this animation has 30 frames, we need to change the scene end from 250 to 30 so that we can play this on a loop. And you can see our walking animation is correct. The rig is walking. We can see the arm rig in the correct position, but the actual arms are not in the correct position. It's being deformed incorrectly. So I'm going to hide the armature so that we can actually see clearly what's going on. We have a Smurf cat walking with his arms all messed up behind him. Uh, this isn't correct, of course. We're going to need to fix that. This is why I record everything so that I know not to do this the next time. Because I'm obviously going to mess up again and we're going to have to deal with this another time. If I recorded it and figured out a solution, then I can always refer back to this video for the Smurf cat video. And then just start from where I figured out a solution. That makes much more sense. Otherwise, you're going to keep keep repeating the process of messing up and then continue messing up because that's where you left off as. That's why I make these videos. It makes much more sense to me to just work, record everything, and then go back and review it and analyze to see, okay, the next time I should make sure to remember not to repeat this pattern. Otherwise, I'll end up with this result where his hands and arms are in the back. We're going to need to fix this somehow. And normally, I like to start with a new file. That way, we restart from the beginning again. This looks pretty funny. I can actually just use it like this. This becomes part of the meme. A Smurf cat with no arms. It's obviously going to get pretty good comments if I use it like this. What do you guys think? Should I have used a Smurf cat like this as part of the character? just to make him a little bit more meme -y. I'm actually just going to delete the files that we added. If you click X on the armature, it's going to leave some leftover files, which we don't want. Make sure to right click and delete the hierarchy and it'll delete the entire thing and it won't leave any leftover files. And then also delete this WTS armature, delete the hierarchy. That way we have our file again from where we originally started from the beginning, which is the Smurf cats collection with all the separate objects. And now we're creating the process again for the XP kit add-on for getting the Mixamo animations into Blender. This is going to be my second try doing this again. Our goal is actually to perfect this technique so that we don't run into any issues for the future. I don't know how many tries I took to do it, but this is how I do the Rigify animation portion when I have a humanoid type body for my characters. I should definitely practice and make sure that I get this process correct. This is definitely going to help out with my future games and all the characters that I work with. This is how I do the Rigify animation portion when I have a humanoid humanoid type body for my characters. Go to file, import the no animation FBX again. First thing we need to do is apply all transforms because the scale is incorrect. Also the rotation has a 90 degree in the x-axis which is incorrect as well when we apply all the transforms it zeroes out the rotation in the x-axis and then applies the scale of one and then click the armature check in front so that we can see the bones in front Go to pose mode, right click, conversion, extract meta rig, and the rig type should be Mixamo with these settings for the offset knee, offset elbow, offset fingers. Let's hide the armature, select the meta rig. You can also check in front to see the mega rig here as well. Go to edit mode. So I'm supposed to be adjusting these bones to make sure they're in the correct position, but it doesn't look like they are. The hands are in the incorrect position too high up. I'm dragging this down. If you turn on symmetry in the x-axis, you can move one of the hands and it will move the opposite end on the other side as well. I really like the symmetry option for this. And we also need to move the heels closer to the foot. I feel like they're out of place. And then any bones we don't need, we can just delete them. Usually I can delete these pelvis bones. I don't know why it's in the chest area. And then also near the face, there's breast bones. And then go to object mode, regenerate the rig, hide the meta rig. And in pose mode, we can test our rig by moving these rig layers. And it'll deform our character. I'm grabbing the hand rig, moving it around. I'm grabbing the torso, moving him around. He's doing this movement. It's like, oop. Uh, doop, 
uh, doopity do like the Willy Wonka. I don't know why I thought about that, but that's what I thought of. I forgot the actual song, actually. I think it's like Oompa Loompa Doopity Do. I got another, what is it? I got another something for you. I don't know why I thought about that. This fly needs to get out of my face. I'm grabbing the neck layer, moving it around. You can manually create some animations by moving your rig if you wanted to. You just move things around, test your rig, and you can see that it really works. It deforms all your movements to your body parts correctly. Super simple. But I'm going to delete this again. I might have messed up on my process. I want to get the process correct. I'm deleting the hierarchy again for all the armatures. Let's import the FBX file once again for the no animation FBX. This is going to be our third try, I believe. Check in front, go to pose mode, right click, conversion, extract the meta rig. You can see when I extracted the meta rig, something's off. This is incorrect. Why is our bones showing, but not the texture anymore with our 3D model? We can see the 3D model all scattered in the back, connected by these dotted lines. Something is incorrect, and I can't really zoom into the 3D model to show you, but you can kind of see it with the dotted lines that something went off when I extracted the meta rig. And the reason this happens is because I forgot a step. And that step was to apply all transforms before you extract the meta rig. I think that's why. Should be why. Let's delete the hierarchy again for the armatures. Start over. Fourth try again. Import FBX. No animation. Make sure we apply all transforms to zero out the rotation and the scale to one. Check in front. See our bones in front. Go to pose mode. Right click. Conversion. Extract meta rig. And the rig type is set to Mixamo with these settings for the offset knee, offset elbow, offset fingers. You can adjust that however you want. Let's hide the armature. Check in front for the meta rig. Go to edit mode. Check the X axis for symmetry. Move these hand bones down. Delete the pelvis bones because we don't need that it's in an incorrect position anyways move the heel bone closer to the foot move these breast bones in the correct position or delete them entirely up to you i don't think we need them go to object mode regenerate the rig the rig is successfully generated hide the meta rig if we want to test our rig for the movements, we'll just go in pose mode and we have all these rig layers for us to hide and unhide. If I select it, we can hide any rig layers that we don't want to move around at the moment. This helps you focus on a specific body part while you're doing your animations. You can keep it all on if that helps you as well. That way we skip the entire process of creating the different bone layers and the different bone groups with the names and the color coding. It's already automatically done since we use Mixamo to handle the auto rigging. And this only applies if we're using like a humanoid character. So one with the head and a body like this. Move the hand rig, move the torso rig, do this uppity up oompa loompa type movement and now we got the first part of the process correct let's import the walking animation fbx from mixamo let's select the rig shift select the walking armature go to pose mode right click go to binding bind to active armature it'll bring out this menu for two bind select rigify controls for bind targets select mixamo you should see that the smurf cat 3d model deform that's how you know it deformed correctly if i press undo you can see the arms are still there but when we binded the walk armature to the rig that's when the arms went missing we have the rig selected right click binding select constraint controls and that will select the entire rig what we want to do is select one of the bones on the walk armature right click go to animation bake constraint actions click bake and exits and this will bake the walk armature animation onto our rig and for some reason when i did this my blender application wasn't responding i was getting the rainbow wheel something got corrupted i had to force quit and start the process over again <laughs> this is gonna happen telling you throughout your entire process things aren't gonna go out in your favor and you just have to be patient and just keep going at it again and again until you get it right we're starting from the beginning again i think this is my fifth time doing this you can see i'm actually learning the process as i'm doing it over and over i'm getting through the process making sure i don't make mistakes go to file import fbx click the no animation fbx apply all transforms check in front 
So we can see the bones, go to pose mode, right click, conversion, extract, meta rig, change the rig type to Mixamo, adjust the settings for the offset knee, elbow, and fingers. If you want to see what happens when we adjust the offset for the knees, I slide the slider and you can see it bending our knees and the armature should be hidden and our meta rig should be in front but I'm not sure why it keeps turning on my armature. <laughs> That's basically what happens. Dragging these hand bones down to align it in place. Drag these breast bones down. Drag these pelvis bones down. You can keep them or delete them. Go to object mode, regenerate the rig, test the rig, move it around. If you want to turn off the rig layers, use these buttons to hide and unhide. And we're going to import the walking animation again. Go to file, import, FBX, select the walking FBX, select the rig, shift select, the walking armature go to pose mode right click binding bind to active armature the settings for to bind is rigify controls the settings for bind target is mixamo for chain look at you want to check it and you can see how it looks when you have it unchecked and then when you have it checked it seems like it deforms much more nicely if you have it checked. We're still having this arm issue with Smurf cats where the arms aren't on the sides. It's actually being pulled backwards. Maybe it has to do with Mixamo. Back in the Mixamo, I drag in the FBX file. And I was thinking maybe we should try adjusting the skeleton by clicking this menu, clicking three chain fingers, just to see what happens when we export this. You almost have to try every option to really know what it does. There might be some videos on YouTube or something that tells you, but I like to try things on my own, especially if it's going to be part of my workflow, figure it out and decide whether it's going to help my character development process or not and make adjustments from there download this these versions i'm actually going to call it v2 for version 2 version 1 definitely did not work but version 2 possibly might work and this is version 2 of the no animation and also version 2 of the walking animation that's what i'm testing right now whether the three finger skeleton would fix the arm issue go to open recent reopen smurf cat start from the original blender file and run through the process once again. What is this like? Try number six. Let's import version two of the no animation. Apply all transforms. Go to pose mode. Right click. Go to XP kits. Conversion. Extract. The meta rig. Change the rig type to Mixamo. Check in front. I do find it a little peculiar that the hands are in the air like that. With those hand bones. That actually caught my attention. Maybe the hands has to do with why our rig isn't coming out correctly with the backwards arms. These hand bones are placed incorrectly which is interesting if it was correct those hand bones would have been with the 3d model at the bottom i was trying to adjust it to make sure that they're aligned but i thought the three chain fingers would have solved that but i guess it doesn't this doesn't seem to be correct if i generate the rig and we go through the process again we still have these backward arms issue <laughs> it was a little bit peculiar and i tried adjusting the binding bone layers that doesn't seem to be doing anything. How can we resolve this? Otherwise, I'm going to have a 3D model of the Smurf cat with backward arms like this. I'm just clicking around, trying to troubleshoot this issue. I uncheck copy rotation. It seems to do something, but doesn't fix the arms. I uncheck copy location. It kind of does something, but that's not what we want. I've actually never gone through this problem or issue. That's why I have no solution at the moment. I'm trying to find a solution. Otherwise, we're going to have a Smurf cat with broken arms, and we don't want that. Pretty meme but I mean, the broken arms one can actually be a skin that I use. <laughs> that's the only other alternative that I'm thinking. The only other thing that I thought of was in Mix you have to drag your 3d model or fbx with a t pose and right now we don't have a t pose we have like an a pose the way his arms are so maybe that's the problem we have to move the arms up in the air the bones are actually placed like in a t pose as well for the hands that might have been an indicator of what to do i click sculpting i was planning to pivot the arms like a hinge but i'm actually not familiar with the tools in sculpting to do that i tried the side relax i tried to use the pose that's deforming our 3d model but i just want to make it pivot to create a t pose maybe i'll try the rotate tool that 
doesn't seem to be helping. I definitely need to figure out how to use the sculpting tool much better. I've used it in the beginning, but it's not really in my list of things to do. If I focus my time on sculpting, that's actually going to make me try to become more of a perfectionist, creating a more perfect 3D model sculpting, a character, and then doing extra work, spending a lot of time, which is what I don't want to do. I'm trying to do things as quick as possible, get it done, get it out the way, so we can actually spend more time on the other aspects. Since I do want to make games, but I also like the 3D modeling process of creating characters, Characters. At the end of the day, I should be able to do this as quickly as possible and not have to spend way too much time on it like I'm doing now. But that's because I'm figuring this out for the first time. And we already went through this process like five or six times and it wasn't really working. So it's bothering me at this point. You need to find a solution right now. We exhausted every option. So this is the last solution that I thought of. Since I thought of pivoting the arms, let's just try to add a single bone and use it as a pivot. That way we can parent the bone to the 3D model and then just deform it. Align this bone and we can do it on both sides. I want to pivot both of the arms to create a T-pose. That was the solution that I had in mind, but I've never done that. What we do is select the body, shift click the bone, press control P and parent with automatic weights. We're going to test this, go to pose mode and select that joint. And we're going to be rotating this. And I think I was rotating this right now. It looks like I was scaling it, which is incorrect, but this way doesn't seem to work for me. I just delete it. And what I do instead is add an armature and click the human rig. This one I know works because it has a whole bunch of joints and we have a humanoid character anyways. We just need to remove these face bones. We don't really need that right now. And then adjust the bones to match the Smurf cat. Drag these bones down, making sure everything is aligned as best as we can. We're still trying that solution where we're pivoting the arms to make it a T pose, but we're actually doing it with the human rig. I know that's definitely going to work. Select the body, select the rig, press control P to parent with automatic weights and select the arm, rotate this, but we want to rotate both sides. Make sure you click X at the top for symmetry. That way when we rotate the right side, it rotates the left side to create T pose. This should be correct. And I was going to clear the parent to get rid of the rig. But when I do that, the 3D model deforms back to the original A pose, which is what we don't want. Now we got to figure out how to keep this T pose. I go to pose mode, go to pose, apply, and I want to apply this pose as a rest pose or apply this selected as rest pose. When I click that, it actually goes back to the A pose, which is incorrect. I try the other option, apply pose as rest pose, and it does the same thing, brings it back to the A pose. That's not what we want. This was beginning to bug me a little bit. How else are we gonna get this pose to stay in place? Since the arm moves down back to the A pose, when we apply it to the rest pose, we can duplicate the armature and that brings the arms up into more of a V pose. That when we apply the pose as a rest pose for the Smurf cap 3D model, it will actually bring down the arms to the T pose. And that's correct. That's exactly what I was looking for. We want it in a T pose so that we can use in Mixamo. Hopefully this resolves the issue. I'm going to clear the parent from the human rig from the 3D model. That way we have our 3D model with this T pose. And we go to file exports. This time, I'm just going to select selected objects. We're not going to select anything else. We're going to call this version three Blender export. Export this, go back to Mixamo, upload the character, drag in Smurf Cat version three, click next. And this is a little bit weird. It didn't ask us to drag the color markers. Usually it does. I probably did something wrong. Go back to Blender. I think having this meta rig still in here is causing issues. Let's re-export this one more time. Export selected objects, overwrite the Smurf cat version three, export, drag this version again, and we get the color markers again. Blue markers to the chin, green markers to the wrist, yellow markers to the elbows, orange markers to the knees, red marker to the groin. Let's check three chain fingers, click next. And now our character is in a T pose. Let us scan the character and auto rig. We get a preview of the character, click next. X the walking animation so we can download this as the original pose, click download. Call this one Smurf Cat to version three, Mixamal export. And then select that walking animation again, check in place, download the walking animation. And now we have our version three of the walking animation. Go back to Blender, uncheck the Smurf Cat collection so we can hide it. Go to the file and port, select the Smurf Cat version three, Mixamal export, and import that FBX. Apply all transforms to zero out the location and rotation. 
and bring the scale back to one. Click the armature icon, check in front so we can get the bones in front. And I do notice these little bones sticking out. I'm not sure what it is, but we're just going to continue on our process. Go to pose mode. You can see the offset of those finger bones are out, but at least the arms are correct now with the hand bones in place, which is correct. Right click, XP kits, conversion, extract, meta rig. Rig type is Mixamo. Before we do that, let's go to edit mode, double check these finger bones. Since we did the three chain finger bones, you can see there's only three different chains. Some of these finger bones are not in place, but that's okay. We can just align them if we want to make this as perfect. It's entirely up to you. This helps out the deforming of your 3D model and the rig. On pose mode, I can actually grab these finger bones that are like floating in the air and drag them closer, put them back on the hinges. That way it seems a little bit more correct. Right click, XP kit, conversion, extract, the meta rig. Rig type is Mixamo. I'm going to hide the armature, check in front for the meta rig so we can see the bones in front. And this was a little bit annoying. Every time I changed the offset knee or offset elbow or offset fingers, it would make the armature appear again, even though I chose to hide it. That was a little bit annoying, but that's okay. We're just going to type in the values that I was using from my notes. This I'll probably experiment in another video or something, but I forgot in edit mode, I need to remove any additional bones that we don't need, like these pelvis bones where the chest is, we can delete that. And then these breast bones where the face is, we could delete that as well. And we need to drag in the heels so it's aligned better on our feet. We're gonna keep those hand bones like that. And then go to object mode, regenerate the rig, hide the armature, select the rig, go to pose mode. These are the buttons you can use to hide and unhide for all your rig layers. And they're all properly named correctly. So you know what button does what for each rig layer. I turn on the torso and you see that rig layer shows. I can grab it, move his hips around, get some sort of movement if we were gonna keyframe something for the Smurf cat. Or I can highlight all the buttons and just have all the rig layers showing. And then we can see the different movements that we can do as we deform the smurf cat grab this head layer move it up and down we get this cool head bob but let's finish the process we're going to go to import import the smurf cat version 3 of the walking animation and it's going to have this armature bone sticking out that's how we know what we do is select the rig shift select the armature go to pose mode right click xp kits binding bind to active armature it'll bring out this menu to bind we select the rigify controls and bind targets we select Mixamo. And when we do that, you can see our rig adjusts itself to the same position as the walking animation. And our arms seem to be correct now. It's not backwards like how it usually is. We solved that issue with the backward arms. It would have been cool to keep it as part of the meme, but we want the character to at least look correct. We check chain look at because it seems to deform a lot much better. And you can see the difference between the two. Definitely keep chain look at checked and then when we press play we can see the walking animation of the smurf cat where we applied the walking animation this is pretty cool already we can hide the armature so that we can just focus on watching the texture and our 3d model just walking rotate around see how that looks i think that looks pretty good and it took us quite some time to get to this point but it's all part of the process of figuring things out now we know that this works we need to bake the animation select the rig right click xp kit binding select constraint controls and that highlights our rig and then select one of the bones on the walking animation armature right click animation bake constraint actions and this menu is going to come up and we just need to click bake and exit and go to our animation workspace and it should be this f action point zero zero two the other ones are incorrect it definitely should be this action point zero zero two i'm going to delete the walking animation now we don't need that anymore we already baked the walk animation into our rig and i want to keep this a little bit more organized bring down this drop down menu go to blender file go to actions delete any actions we don't need other than action point zero zero two we're going to keep that one that's the one we just created and baked and then we could play the animation to make sure it's correct Go into pose mode. If we select everything, we can see the keyframes at the bottom, which is correct. And if we slide through, 
the timeline, we can see the animation. Now we just need to rename this walking animation from action point 002 to Smurf Cat's walk animation. And then just press play and we get this cool walking animation. It's pretty complex. If we had to do this ourselves, look how many rig layers there's going to be to create this walking animation. That's the beauty of using Mixamo. We get this nice loop going. Cool animation. Feels a lot fluent for the Smurf Cat. I can hide the armature so that we can just focus on the character and I just rotate around to see if this is the walking animation we like. I like it. It's pretty good. Let's go to layouts if we want a bigger screen to see the animation. But now that we have the process and it's working this way, the importance of this is so that we can bake as many animations as we want to our rig and we can use that in our animations in our different renders. It makes our process a little bit faster instead of having to rig everything ourselves and slowly create the animation from each rig layer, we can use the animation that's already in Mixamo and apply it to our rig in Blender. Let's just grab another animation. I type in a roll, click around to see which one you like. And I definitely like this sprinting forward roll. And if we check in place, it will just do that sprinting forward roll in place. And we can download this, drag it to our folder, rename it to Smurf Cat version 3 Mixamo sprinting forward roll. This is how I keep myself organized. Trust me, the next time you look at your files, you're going to look at it and not really know what each file is again, especially if you don't have recordings of the entire process like I do. Go to imports, FBX, select the Smurf Cat version 3, Mixamo, sprinting forward roll, and we get this armature. What we do is select the rig, shift select the armature, go to pose mode, right click, XP kit, binding, bind to active armature. For to bind, we select rigify controls, bind target, select Mixamo. You'll see our rig will match the animation for the sprinting roll. Select the rig, right click XP kit binding, select constraint controls. It will select the entire rig and then select one of the bones on the armature to make sure that's active. Right click XP kits animation, bake constraint actions, and then bake and exits. Go back to the animation workspace and we just baked the rolling forward animation, which is the F action point zero zero one and it leaves over some leftover files that we don't need and this one's the correct one i think the zero action and the zero armature mixamo layer are imported when we imported the rolling sprint animation but then it's not baked into our rig just yet so that's why we went through that process to bake it and that created the f action point zero zero one and that's what we want if we hide the armature you can see we have the sprinting roll forward animation that looks pretty cool hide our rig so we can just focus on this and then we can delete the sprint rolling armature we don't need that anymore because we just baked the animation into our rig and then go to the drop down menu again go to blender file actions delete that action and also the armature maximo layer zero keep our file nice and tidy with the only actions we need rename the action point zero zero one to Smurf Cat's sprinting roll animation. And now we have two of our animations. We have the sprinting roll animation for the Smurf Cat. And then we also have the walk animation for the Smurf Cat. That's how you would bake different animations into one rig. And then you'll be able to have all your animations to use for your different renders. That's a pretty cool part about this. If you want to slow down this animation, which I felt like was a little bit too fast for the rolling, you can just highlight your keyframes and then press S to scale. If you scale it out, it Will increase the amount of frames per second. You can just adjust this. It's going to take a longer time to complete the roll. Change the scene in to 97 and then press play and we get this like slower roll of the character and you can adjust this however you like. If you want the faster roll, just scale it down so you have less frames per second and if you want it fast, you have more frames per second but i'm just going to bring this back we can keep our frames short and sweet and this is awesome i definitely like those two animations let's go back to the walk animation and every time we test the different animations we have to change the value for the scene end to make sure it loops correctly be sure to do that and this looks pretty awesome already and we have two pretty cool animations for the smurf cat the walk animation and also the sprinting roll animation and that completes our long process of rigify mixamo and animation all combined Usually this is separate, but now we actually have a workflow that works. And I can continue to do this with my future characters or anything that I use with this process. We're going to need to set up the camera. We have our walk animation and a sprinting forward roll animation. We're going to move this reference up. Increase the opacity back to one so we can see more of the color of the reference. This actually looks pretty good against 
the reference. If I wanted to make that background, that would be pretty awesome. I can definitely imagine the scene right now, how it would look. But of course, everything I do is very simplistic. How I have it in my head isn't going to come out how exactly how it's supposed to be. Let's add a plane. We can start creating the ground, add a material, use the existing material we already have. I'm not sure why there's duplicate materials. I probably should delete that actually to keep everything organized. I just use one material to keep everything simplified. I do this because I make mobile games and this just makes life easier. I've just been using that technique over and over. You can use as many materials as you want. If you want a different color or a different texture for different separate objects, entirely up to you, but that's not what I do. Possibly in the future, maybe I would do that, but at the moment, we're not going to do that. Let's go to the texture paint workspace, and I'm just going to drag these vertices to project the floor of this moss grass area and the rocks. You can see we're projecting this little area at the bottom for our plane to create somewhat of a floor. And I'm just moving this around to see if I want the lighter color of this moss area or the dark area, just to get an idea of how that would look. The light area actually looks pretty good. Every time I look at this, this reminds me of The Legend of Zelda, actually. If you've played that on N64, Ocarina of Time, the background just kind of reminds me of that when you're fighting those Deku seeds where you have to climb up that wall. Just projecting this area of the texture just reminds me of that. If you're familiar with Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, that's pretty much I guess how they made their graphics, just projecting a specific texture. I guess this would be similar to N64 graphics. Of course, Blender didn't exist in the past, so it wasn't as easy as it is to do it now, but that's something to think of when you're actually creating this type of PS1 N64 style vibes. I actually like this type of style. Maybe this is where I transition into this type of graphics to mix and match my own character style with more of a nostalgic, type of feel to it we'll just see we'll just see since we scaled the uv for the plane down we can just move this around to see what texture projection is going to look good for the plane on the floor you could pretty much just move it anywhere on the reference and since our uvs are super small it's just projecting like that little area so it's going to be a little bit blurry and this area looks pretty good you pretty much just move it anywhere and create that type of style. This just gives us an idea of the Smurf cat walking on some sort of grassy floor, swampy floor actually. And then I press play and you can see he's walking. This walk animation is what we got from Mixamo. Pretty awesome. You can see different views. At the top left, you can see our texture of the Smurf cat. And then on the right side, you can see our actual 3D model. Looks entirely different, but the texture projection actually makes it look pretty cool. That's what I like about this. Even though you make a hideous 3D model, the texture projection pretty much saves it because of the way the character looks. It looks pretty perfect, actually, at least to me. I'm actually happy with how it turned out. I might even make a game out of this. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments. Should I make a game with this Smurf cat character? This looks pretty cool already. We already have some sort of an idea of how the floor is going to look like. I can use some sort of separate objects around and we can do some avoiding game. We'll just see what I come up with. What game should I make with the Smurf cat 3D model? Leave it in the comments. Let's hear some ideas. That's pretty good for the swamp grass looking floor. What we can do is add an icosphere and just move this around, scale it down. And it's white at the moment because we haven't applied any material or texture on top of it. So we can just move this in the air, add the same material, and now we have this ball. If we go to edit mode, select everything, you can see our UVs on the left side. We can right click, press U, do a project from view. And now this circular UV is grabbing this dark green from the reference. We can move this around so we can grab texture of this rock area. And we really don't need the bottom half since we're trying to mimic a rock. We just go into edit mode, go into x-ray mode, select these bottom faces and delete it. That leaves us a top circular rock for us to move around. Let's drag this to the floor, press play again. And we could definitely get an idea of how this scene would look like if we placed a bunch of rocks all over the place. Start getting some ideas on what to do with the Smurf cat 3D model. I'm just randomly placing these rocks 
so that we have some sort of idea or some sort of scene that we're creating. And let's create some variation for the rocks. An easy way to do this is to add a decimate modifier and then adjust the ratio. And as I'm adjusting the ratio, you can see what happens to our 3D model. It's taking away some vertices and changes our polygon. You can see that happening on the right side. And if you want to see it with the texture, you just look at it on the top left and it gives us some variation for our rock so that it doesn't look the same. I'm going to leave it at this. We have more of a sharper rock. Before we duplicate more of the rocks, let's rename it so that we have the correct naming convention first. I named this to rock. This one is rock 0.001 and then rename the plane to something like ground. Keeps us organized so we know what everything is before we add on more 3D models. Duplicate this gives us a different rock. Go back to the decimate modifier, just the ratio. You can play around with the other settings like unsubdivide and planar. I don't think it did anything or at least I'm using it wrong. I probably should do a little bit more research on what this actually does and how to effectively use it. But I like to be hands on. Just go in, play around, see what happens. If you like it, keep it. If you don't, change it. It's pretty much how I work. I'm very simple. I only do things whenever I need it. The way I do things is if I need it at the moment, then I'll go figure it out and try to learn about it. Instead of trying to learn all of it at once, that's what happens when you're looking for Blender tutorials and how to do things. There's like a million things to learn. And if you learn them all, there would really be no point if you're not really using that knowledge. I can learn all these tutorials, but when am I ever going to use it? That's why I do things very simple. When things come up, like when I need a rock, how would I do it? If I don't know how to do it, then I'll go figure it out. And that's the only time I would need to learn how to create a rock or how to make a better rock. I'm actually using it at the moment, if that makes sense. So let's move these UVs to the right side. Try to get a different texture, scale it down, get some variation. All the rocks doesn't really look the same. You can play around. You don't have to use the same texture. I'm just experimenting on how to create a simple scene with whatever I have. Sometimes we have just one texture and you just got to be creative in how you use it. You don't have to have a million different things. You just need to be able to use that one thing for a million different ways. And if you want to continue creating some more variation in your rocks, you can always select one of the faces, turn on proportional edits, drag it up, drag it to the side, see how that looks. Just move it around to see if you can create a different type of rock. Scale it down. You can scale it again. Just randomly think of things on the spot and then just just press play see how the scene turns out and now we have this smurf cat walking in this swampy grass area with these pretty cool rocks i could definitely see a endless runner game out of this at least that's the most simplest game i can make or even some simple platformer game having the smurf cat walk around using a joystick and possibly picking up the rocks, throwing them. I have no idea. I'm going to duplicate the ground so we can create some sort of back wall, give it some background, and then press U to unwrap again so that we get a larger square for the UVs again. We can scale this down and just drag it somewhere on the reference to give it some contrast from the floor. Scale it down, find some place that looks pretty good, that blends in pretty well with the floor. You can pretty much just do anything. It's your creative process. It's your ideas. Just have fun with it. Press play. Start getting an idea of how this entire thing will look. Start playing around creating this scene for the Smurf cat. It's going to be a very simple scene. We're not going to do some complex things yet. I'm actually not there in my blender journey. I'm just learning everything as I go and whatever works at the moment is what I'm going to stick with. And I know this is going to be a very long journey, so I'm going to be very patient with myself trying to figure all of this out. And also we will always have these videos to refer back to if I do forget things. And then we can always look back at it, I guess, a year or two from now to see my own progress. Did I get better at 3D modeling? Did I get better at creating scenes? Did I get better at creating animations in Blender? All those things will happen over time. And it's not going to happen overnight, of course. But with every 3D model, that I create in Blender, I'm definitely going to get better and better. We'll just see where that goes. 
are scaled out the background scaled out the floor let's move this background honestly i'm just going with my gut feeling most of the time i have no idea how this is going to turn out i just like to be creative play around see what looks good and then go back and analyze everything to see whether or not it works out i'm going to select the meta rig and the armature move it to a new collection call this smurf cat animated what i'm going to do is select the armature and then go to the bottom shift click the rock 0.002 and that will select everything in between move this all to a new collection called the smurf cats scene one and doing this leaves some leftover files for our 3d model the body the eyes the head and the mushroom hats is being separated from our armature we also just have to move that to the smurf cat scene one collection and that's actually being nested inside of the armature that's why you can't see it visible at the moment what i'm going to do is go to file append and i'm going to go into my characters one folder and this has all the characters that i've been working on check out those videos on my channel what i'm going to do is go to file append and i'm going to go into my characters one folder and i'm going to click the characters one blender file and click collection and then click the camera view collection that i created in the characters one file and i'm going to click append and it's going to bring the camera view collection that i created in that characters one file into this blender file that way i don't have to recreate the camera the empty the plane and all the different light points that we created you can see that being added added to our scene and this is a way to quickly add in different collections from other projects if you have like a cool scene that you created it has all the lights set up and everything with the correct camera placements or camera movements you can append that from any of your blender files and that will make your life so much easier it's like creating a template that you use over and over it makes life so much easier that's things that i look for is how can i make my blender process super simple where i'm just reusing things instead of reinventing the wheel and doing it over and over the only time we do it over and over is if we're practicing but once we know the process we can always just reuse different templates that we create for ourselves with this i can press zero on my numpad and this is how the scene is going to look currently it's going to be in landscape and then for the empty i can move this up if you want to see how i created this camera view collection definitely check out the 3d modeling the baby car meme on my channel you'll definitely learn how i did that in that video we can also go to the toolbar go to view click camera to view so that we can adjust the camera around as well by using the middle mouse button and moving the empty also shifts the camera for us that way we can keep our smurf cat centered in the screen as we capture some sort of animation and i can just move the camera view around with my mouse try to get an angle that looks good where we see the smurf cat with the background the floor and the rocks start practicing rendering out animations and scenes in blender that way we get familiar with this process and we can continue to get better at animations i've always wanted to do animations i think they look pretty cool when people post them on social media eventually that's where my mind is leading me towards and we're just going to start with our simple 3d models until we get to that point where i start creating some cool loopable animations and we'll just see how that goes i click render Click render animation. So far, this is how it looks. The lighting looks a little bit interesting. I kind of like that shadow in the background. The 3D model is still showing our low poly. The texture doesn't look as good and the coloring looks off. I really like that shadow though. I actually want the scene to just have our textures. That's something I wanted to figure out. It was rendering differently than how I imagined it to be, but that's probably gonna be in the render setting somewhere that I need to adjust. Let's hide the armature and the meta rig. What I'm gonna do select the mushroom hats right click shade smooth select the head right click shade smooth select the body right click shade smooth select all the rocks right click shade smooth this way we don't have that low poly design we just want our character to be a little bit more smooth and instead of rendering the animation again you can also just go to this button at the top and it will show you how your render scene will look like while you're working in Blender. This is how the scene looks like at the moment. And we can move the light source around if you don't like that hard shadow. I kind of like the shadow though looks pretty cool i would probably keep the shadow but keep more of the textures so now if we zoom in we can actually see how our 3d model looks like with the textures being projected you can really see the 3d model this is definitely something i probably should improve on let's go back to render render animation let blender 
render this animation. This is how the scene is going to look currently without adjusting any of the settings. We're just going to have the Smurf cat walking in this scene. And if we go to the temp folder, you can see it's rendering out every scene as a PNG. And there's about 30 scenes right now. I was trying to render an animation in video and the output was in my temp folder, which is what we have here. You can always change that to any directory that you like. And right now it's set to PNG. That's why it's coming out individually like this. If we click the drop down menu for the file format, we can click FF and peg video, go to encoding under the container, change it to MP4. If that's the format you want, that's the format that I want. I want this as a video animation and go back to render, render animation, let it render the 30 scenes again. I definitely like this smurf cat shadow that we have right here but i would want to have the textures just be like how it is in our scene similar to how we can't really see the 3d model just mainly the texture and once it's finished rendering out a video we can open this in quicktime and then turn on loop that way we can watch this animation in a loop and just look at it and see what are some things that i like and what are some things i don't like what changes should i make like I said, I do like the shadow in the back. I like that we have a walking animation. So we use that as a loop on social media, but I don't really like the colors at the moment. This probably has to do with the lighting. Those are some things we would need to change. This is a very good first video, of course. And I'm just going through the settings with this camera button. I vaguely remember doing it before, but I've only done it like once. I don't really know where it is exactly. Technically, if I press play, I want the scene to kind of look like this with the textures and the coloring like this for the smurf cat and the background like this i think it looks pretty good like this if we're able to render this exact scene how we're seeing it right now and then maybe add on the shadow in the back somehow that's something i would have to figure out but this walking animation is pretty cool it's really awesome that mixamo is available for us to use and it's free so you can definitely check that out and i'm just hiding anything from the scene so that we can get a better idea of what I'm looking for. This is exactly how I would render it out. Go to our animation workspace. Let's change the animation to the sprinting roll animation just to see how that would look. This is actually pretty funny looking at this with the sprinting roll animation. Uh, we can't really see this cat's face with this type of animation. Even if I move it around, this would be a different angle. We would probably need to move the angle to get a better shot because he just goes into the floor. Let's change it back to the walk animation. It's much more visible doing it this way. We can actually see the character. So far, this is pretty good. We've set up the camera and we're still trying to figure out the render settings. I'm actually adjusting this mic feel like it sounds much better when the mic is uh, further away because I feel like I'm yelling into the mic. Doing a little bit of adjusting on that. Let's get back to rendering the animation. I definitely like how it looks right now, but when we go to this render option, it looks entirely different. I want to figure out how we can render this correctly. If you click this icon on the side, you can see there's options under light that you can check. Now, I thought unchecking under combined maybe would have some sort of effect on the left side of the screen, but I don't really see anything. This definitely looks like this is where it would be. I decided to add a new workspace, add the layouts option, drag the corner so we can split the screen from this, turn on compositor, and this shows the render layers of what your scene would look like under lights. If you check color, it's going to add this color endpoints. And if you disconnect the image to image and connect the diffuse color to image. Now, when we rendered the animation, you can see it's rendering correctly how I want it with just the texture on our 3D model. That way we have this cool scene with the right colors. But when I render it, it's sort of glitching in between the shadow. I like how the render came out, but I actually like the shadow on the back. So that would be something I need to figure out for this Smurf Cat animation. I see a shadow option. I press check. That brings another shadow endpoint. We definitely need to connect this somewhere, but if I connect it to image, it disconnects the diffuse color. So that's not correct. I should probably look at YouTube, try to figure that out on how to keep our diffuse color, but also keep the shadow. And for some reason, the render layers disappeared 
for how our render is going to look like. It still works if we go to render, render animation. If we leave this, this is how the render animation would look like. It glitches in between the original shadow version. I guess it doesn't have any effect on the actual video though, so it's fine. Once it's done rendering the animation video, I can open this up in quick time, enlarge the screen, make sure I select a loop so we can watch this animation in a loop. And this is the Smurf cat walking in our scene that we created. This looks pretty cool with these three rocks that we added to the scene. We can definitely add a lot more to this scene, but this is just to get a brief idea of how to create cool rendered animations with just the textures on our 3D model. I like this. This animation looks pretty good for the Smurf Cat. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments. I definitely would add that shadow in the back again, though, just to give it some, I guess, contrast, not contrast. How would I say it? I guess it gives it some depth. If you think about an actual scene, if there's a light source, you would be able to see the shadow. I'm putting some sort of light source. Just imagine an imaginary light source right here, just shining against the Smurf cat against the wall. You sh should be able to see a shadow. That's what we're missing. That's definitely something I would need to figure out. Probably it has to do with that checkbox for the shadow. But for right now, we can just go back to our original way and just focus on rendering out this animation also we need to finish this video for the smurf cat this is actually a long video i try to my best not to make it super long but there's a lot of good nuggets to explain and i just feel like i should just make this video as thoroughly as possible when i review it when i go back i'll have something cool to refer back to if i ever forget this entire process this is a very long process i think i learned a lot throughout making this Smurf Cat 3D model. And I could definitely reuse some of the stuff that I learned throughout the process for my next character. And possibly we could use this in a game. I'm gonna rename this render animation video to Smurf Cat Render, put in parentheses, landscape. So that we know this is a landscape video. We can always reuse that video in our social media content. That's what I really like about it. And for the camera, if we wanted to render out a portrait, type of video we just press zero on our numpad to see our current scene and then just flip the resolution in x and y 1080 in the x-axis and 1920 in the y-axis you can also keep it square with 1080 by 1080 entirely up to you this is where you would change it to change the formatting now we have a portrait view which works best for like short form videos or portrait style for the smartphone we just need to adjust the background separate objects to make sure we don't have any missing areas of the scene and then go to render animation and then render this out again and now we have a portrait render animation of the smurf cat walking in our swampy looking background and a few rocks here and there just so we have an idea of what this character would look like if we had a walking animation and now i have this i can use this on social media i can use this as a reference to look at it if i want to possibly maybe make a game out of this character or even just remember what we did previously and you can click through these buttons to see the different material preview mode i don't know the actual names actually i'll look at it right now because i should know it by heart but i actually don't for the viewport shading the first option is wireframe the second option is solid third option is material preview and the fourth option is rendered those are the different options you can switch between to see how your scene is going to look like and your 3d models and your characters i'll open this in quick time turn on loop press play and here's our portrait render animation of the smurf cat he's just walking this is pretty cool i like it definitely need to add that shadow in the back but this render animation looks pretty awesome i would probably add more crazier stuff to the scene so that i can post it on social media but we'll just see this would actually be pretty cool adding the background sound the spectra by alan walker the we live we love we lie dun, 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 dun. That would be pretty cool with this render animation. Uh, I'm not sure what I was doing here. Oh, I duplicated the armature. I duplicated the armature so that we have a backup in case I make some changes. We're going to expand the armature because it has all of our separate objects. It has the body, the eyes, the head, and the mushroom hat. And I'm going to simplify this process by selecting all of it and then joining them together so that our 3D models are one 3D model. And I was curious how the outline would look like with the texture projection. I'm sure it's not going to look as good. How to add the outline to the Smurf cat. I duplicated the body, renamed this to body outline. Under vertex groups, add an outline group. Add a second material, rename this to outline. Change the principled BSDF to emission. Change the color from white to black or whatever color you want to use. And check back face calling. Add the mask modifier, add the solidify modifier. 
check flip normals, check high quality normals, change the material index offset to one, change the shell vertex group to the outline, and then increase the offset from negative one to one. And you can see it changes our 3D model on the left side and made it white. And under the mask modifier, change the vertex group to outline, move the solidify modifier above the mask modifier, increase the thickness to whatever you like, and go to material preview mode. This is where you can see the outline. You probably can't really see it with the way everything looks at the moment. If you go to render and then render image or render the animation, you should be able to see the outline. And this actually doesn't look really good with the way we did our texture projections. But using the outline in this case would probably not look as good unless your character is like a solid color. Definitely check out my other videos on my channel to see how it would look on my other characters. I have a whole bunch of videos. But yeah, I just wanted to see how that would look. And that doesn't look good. So I'm just going to delete it. And we're just going to keep it with the textures we have right now. Because that looks pretty good. And let's keep all this organized. Rename this to Smurfcat Render Portrait. That way we have that file if we ever need to use it. And let's go to our animation workspace. Change it to the sprinting roll animation. And there seems to be two Smurfcats at the moment. We have one doing the sprinting roll. And the other one is just standing there. Hey yo, that looks sus for real. But let's delete the hierarchy and get rid of that Smurf cat. Wasn't sure why it looked like that, if you know what I mean. Let's change the scene in to 48 so we can get the actual loopable animation for the sprinting roll. This way I can render out another animation of the sprinting roll. So we have two different ideas on what this animation would look like. One for the Smurf cat sprinting roll animation. And then we can open it in quick time, turn on loop, play this. You see this looks pretty awesome. Can't really see the face of the Smurf cat. So I would probably need a different angle, but we can do that at another time. I'm just gonna save this as well. Let's rename this to keep us more organized. So we know which one is the walk animation and one for the rolling animation. And then we need also a landscape version. Switch the resolution in the render properties. 1920 in the x axis, 1080 in the y axis. Render this out so we can get the landscape. Don't worry about the glitches. There's a glitch in everything. It won't really affect the animation video for the Smurf Cat rolling forward animation for the landscape. And then open this in quick time, do a little bit of review, turn on loop, press play. And now we have the Smurf Cat sprinting rolling animation in landscape for us to use. If I want to use this, rename it Smurf Cat Rolling Sprint Animation Landscape. Organize this. It's a little bit messy right now. I would probably create folders in my directory. And in the animation tab, we should only have two animations. I'm not sure why there's a duplicate for the walk animation. Let's just keep ourselves organized. Bring down this drop down menu. Go to Blender File. Under Actions. Delete that extra walk animation so that we can have just two animations for our Smurf Cat rig. If we need to return to this. That's all we need to do. So that concludes this video of making 3D models of memes of the Smurf cat, which is a viral meme that has recently risen to the top. Let me know what you think of the entire process. Did you learn a lot? I'm definitely going to reuse some of this process for my future characters and all the things that I work on. Leave a like if you learned anything new from this video. Definitely memes are pretty cool to work on. It makes you think differently. At least it made me think differently. Don't forget to subscribe if you got into the last portion of this video. That's about it. This is actually a new process. I don't really have a set in stone process for this. I was just running through the entire thing. Now I'm gonna have to review everything to figure out how we can simplify this even better so that I can continue to make more videos like this. Let me know what you think in the comments. And that's it for the Smurf Cat. See you in the next video. So peace out. That was a long video. Now I gotta edit it.